Welcome to Atlanta, Georgia, 1992, this January the 1st. You know, at Times Square in New York, the giant white ball comes down to signify the beginning of the new year. Well, last night in downtown Atlanta, the giant peach came down, and that means the signaling of 1992. This is the earliest sellout in the history of the Peach Bowl, and why not? You got 10 and 1 East Carolina against 9 and 2 North Carolina State. You know, historically, the Peach Bowl has had some of the best finishes of all the bowl games. Witness last year, as for the last five years, the winning team has gotten the score in the last minute. Stan White and Auburn coming from behind to win over Indiana, that in 1990. Well, this afternoon, it's the Pirates of East Carolina. You might be saying, well, who are they? Well, ask the guys at Syracuse. They went to the Carrier Dome and they knocked them off there. They also won over Pittsburgh late in the season. And for North Carolina State, steady as usual, 9-2, tying for second to the ACC. But if you want to know the truth about the whole matter, it'd probably rather be in somebody's backyard up in Carolina because this is for supremacy of that state. Roll up the sleeves and just get it on. They don't care for each other. We were thrilled to have an opportunity to play here in this bowl game. And then when the matchup came down, in our opinion, it couldn't have been better. I think it's great for college football to have that kind of interest, and it's a game that, you know, it, it should be played. Oh, there's never been any love loss between East Carolina and NC State. I just don't think the teams like each other. Yeah, it's going it's to be a big ball game. I think that they're not giving us the respect that, uh, you know, we deserve, but that's something we have to um, earn. We've always been better than them, you know, in, in football. And uh, everybody's expecting us to win. We've been trying to play North Carolina teams for a long time, and, and no North Carolina teams will play us. We beat all the other teams in the state. A win means that we are the best football team in the state. We're going to play like there's nobody there. We're just going to play hard, no football. You've got to beat us on the field to prove to me and to my teammates you're a better football team. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. Mike Gottfried is with us as usual on the telecast. He's down in the locker room, and let's go to him to get a further perspective on these two clubs. Thanks, Ron. We should have a great ball game today, and both coaching staff strategy should be very simple. Let's take East Carolina on offense first. East Carolina has been a big play offensive football team. 36 plays of over 25 yards. Jeff Blake has thrown 10 touchdown passes over 25 yards. Look for him today to try to go to number 27, Deion Johnson, this big play receiver. On the other side of the ball, North Carolina State on defense has not allowed big plays. Only three touchdowns have been given up over 25 yards. Something has to give. Now, let's take North Carolina State on offense. Game plan simple. Run the football right at the smaller defensive front of East Carolina. Give the ball to the tailback, Anthony Barber. Greg Maynard, the big fullback, run the ball at them. East Carolina on defense must move around, try to hide the smaller defensive front. Now, special teams could be a big factor. If you've watched the bowl games to date, special teams block kicks, extra points and field goal miss, punt returns for touchdown have been big factors because of the layoff that teams have had preparing for the bowl. Could be a factor today. Let's go out in the field to Adrian Carson. Well, Mike, when you put your heart in it, it can take you anywhere. That's the line that East Carolina has lived by. No other team in major college football has ever gone from losing more than half their games to within a touchdown of an undefeated season in just two years' time. To be ranked number 12 in the country, to play your first bowl game in 13 years, to put on the purple jerseys against a team that you've waited five years to beat. That's college football Cinderella story. But for the ECU fans, the glass slipper will not fit without a win over the Wolfpack. To their sidelines now we go, and Dr. Jer Bunch. Thank you very much, Adrian. You know, while it's true many of NC State's fifth-year seniors are playing in their fourth postseason bowl game, they have never played East Carolina. But all during their four years of college, they've been constantly reminded by the media that they certainly, this game would not happen. However, it's been left up to the sports rounds whether this game will actually be played or not. But today it will be played and decided right here on the football field. And believe me, the Wolfpack fans and the players can't wait. And right now, let's meet the Pirates, 10 and 1 of East Carolina. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Peach Bowl is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rebel. 
For worldwide reservations, call 1-800-FOR-CARS or your travel consultant. And by Corbell Champagne. We have so much to celebrate. Corbell Champagne. about to see the final game, the final football game in Fulton County Stadium because next year we move indoors to the new Georgia Dome. Here's the series history. NC State leading 12-6. The last six years that they have played all even at three apiece. All games have been played in Raleigh. No future games scheduled and the average margin of win almost 18. And Mike, as East Carolina is going to see the ball, NC State won the toss and they have deferred it's a big thing for the Pirates. This first time they've ever been able to wear it, the home jerseys in this game. Ron, the emotional level will be with East Carolina early because it's their first bowl game. North Carolina State's been here before. They need to absorb the first blow. Fobbles kickoff. Will go out of bounds and a five-yard penalty. So all the excitement, all the anticipation, and all it takes is one kicker to kick it out of bounds, and we've got to go back and deflate for just a moment. Coach Bill Lewis, first bowl game as the head coach. 6-4 and 2 as an assistant coach in bowl games for Bill. The officials in today's uh, ball game, John Laurie is the referee. And the crew is from the Big 8 as you look at Dick Sheridan and his winning percentage. Ron, they're going to take the ball to the 35-yard line, their option, and uh, start their offense this time. So we'll get a chance to see Jeff Blake. We've talked a lot about him. Let's see what North Carolina State can do to put a grasp on him. Going to throw on first down. Zips it incomplete at the 46-yard line. And let's meet the Pirates on offense. The quarterback, Jeff Blake. Senior from Sanford, Florida. 32 school records to his credit. Now, the wide receivers, he likes them all, but particularly number 27, Deion Johnson, Newport News, Virginia. And up front, they like to run behind this one, Tom Scott, and why not? 6'7", 338 pounds, Tommy is a junior. Movement first by North Carolina State. Then East Carolina came out of their stance, and it's going to cost them. second down. As I said earlier, Ron, one of the advantages NC State, I think they have in this ball game is the fact that they've been in four bowl games if you're a fifth-year senior. This is East Carolina's first bowl game. They're a little anxious, and they, they just need to settle down. Every man in this NC State club has been to at least one. Some have been, this is their fourth. And as the point is well made, the fact that East Carolina, none of their fellows have been to one bowl game. The lone setback. Hit from behind. Blake will be knocked down for a loss, and it's Mark Thomas who gets there. That's a loss of seven, and let's meet the NC State defense. The nose guard is Logo. Now, he is injured, but they were starting him in the game. Look for Billy Ray Haynes, number 50, at the linebacker position. Over 10 tackles a game is what he averages. And in the secondary, it's a good one, but led by Sebastian Savage. First team, all Atlantic Coast Conference. Five interceptions for him. Third down receiver they like is Luke Fisher, number 91. Shotgun formation. Blake still retreating, and he puts it up long. Down at the 22-yard line, looking for Deion Johnson, and he threw into the middle double coverage. Good defensive series for North Carolina State. They were able to bring two extra defensive backs in on third down to stop East Carolina. Jeff Blake's going to have to get comfortable with this surface. This is a baseball field. It's a flat surface. There's no crown in the middle of the football field. He's going to have to get comfortable throwing the football on this field. Liddell George, the return man. 28 his longest, just over eight yards per return on the punts. John Jett, you saw the numbers on him just a moment ago. He is kicking, not with the advantage of the wind, Mike. As NC State with a nine-man rush at the line of scrimmage. And he drives it. Now you see the wind pushing it. George at the 27. <laughs> uh, 
on offense for North Carolina State, Terry Jordan. He's back after being injured. He took him to a 4-0 record, then broke his left arm. The receivers, Charles Davenport, all everything for the Wolfpack. 33 receptions for over 500 yards. And up front, Scott Adell, the best of the offensive linemen, 6'5", 284 pounds. Pitch on the delay. Barber will have nine, almost ten yards in the play as he is bumped out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Defensively for East Carolina. Up front, very active, but as Mike said, not very large. Gardell, what a fighter he is, their emotional leader. The linebackers, well, Robert Jones, on everybody's All-American list, you'll hear number 44's name called a great deal today. And in the secondary, number 40, Chris Hall, he is their best cover guy. Second down and short, and they go straight ahead with the big fullback. And the point is, this is just what you were talking about. Greg Maynard, who is 6 to 241 yards. And the, the one thing that East Carolina hopes that they don't try to do is just lined up and pound away at them. Well, you watch, Ron. You watch East Carolina. They're moving on defense just before the snap of the ball. The offensive linemen know their blocking scheme. They come up. They see the defense in a certain position, and all of a sudden they move. They're trying to confuse the offensive line in North Carolina State. Chris Williams is coming to the backfield for the Wolfpack, number 30. Swings the pass out to George, and he will be nailed at the 46-yard line by Robert Jones. The other thing you have to look in in bowl games is when you get your injured players back, teams are different now than they were in the regular season. North Carolina State gets their quarterback, Terry Jordan, number 17, back. He's their emotional leader. I talked to Michael Kane, the quarterback coach. He said he brings them a little bit better arm strength and more experience at the quarterback position. Maynard comes back in along with Anthony Barber. It's the eye formation for the Wolfpack on second down. Straight ahead with the big fullback. Bounces off one tackle. He would cross midfield, and that's Jerry Dillon, who is holding on for dear life. And there was a flag down. That is back at the line of scrimmage on the far side of the field. Appears like it's off sides on East Carolina. Second penalty already against the Pirates. Both minor penalties, but also emotional penalties are things of emotion, probably. I'm going to go Mike. back again, and I talk about when you're in your bowl game for the first time, it's not just a, exactly how you handle the game it's how you handle the preparation getting to the game you know the six days seven days they've been here all the press conferences and everything and early in the ball game when you haven't been here before you have a tendency to want to sell out and the adrenaline's flowing East Carolina just has to channel that with the five yard penalty it's now second down and about three Couple of yards, Anthony Barber, Jerry Dillon again, the junior out of Lake Placid, Florida, comes over to make the stop. And from where they have marked the ball, NC State will not have the first down. It will be third down, and they need the ball just inside the 45. Another key point for East Carolina on defense, they're going to play a lot of defensive line, and they're going to roll in two and three different people at uh, the defensive line positions to try to keep them fresh. On the third and short, flags go down as the pitch goes back to Barber. Breaks it for five, now ten, and East Carolina was offsides again. And the cadence by Jordan plus the anticipation, and the Pirates are hurting themselves, plus the fact they didn't make the stop after a 12-yard game. Well, the option, East Carolina expects North Carolina State to pound right at him, and the option has really affected Offside. Defense. Zion Kumalai is the man who jumped offside, the nose guard. See the anticipation on defense. Jumped offside, middle guard. Watch the man right over the center. Kumalai just jumps a little bit too soon. Wanted to get penetration on that short yardage down. Barber now, three carries for 26 yards. Pitch comes to Barber to the near side. Gets by one tackle. Inside the 30, a flag comes down. 
Either that or somebody's yellow armband got yanked off and we saw that go through the air, Mike. Maybe those yellow shoes. <laughs> Good run by Barber. <laughs> North Carolina State getting the ball outside early. What now they're trying to do is start by working outside, then try to get the ball to Maynard inside. Pretty good drive by North Carolina State to this point. Barber ran into his own man and then is going to be pushed back. Robert Jones, number 44, was the first man there to make the stick on him. Robert Jones just met the fullback, Greg Maynard. Did a nice job on that of stopping the isolation play up inside. Watch Robert Jones, 44, step up, take the block of the fullback, just pushed him right back into Anthony Barber. You heard me say that he ran into his own man. There you could see why he ran into his own man as Jones sent him back the other direction. Linebacker has to step up there and meet that fullback on the isolation play. Pitch goes to Cotton. Turns the corner, caught for the ankle, and I don't know. Very, very close. It's Robert Jones who was holding on to his ankle. Also, Jerry Dillon down at the bottom of the pile. And from where they put it down, what do you think? Mike, I, you got a better angle than I do. Does he have it? Uh, it's very close. I guess I, I think North Carolina State got the benefit of a pretty decent spot there, but I don't know if he still has made the first down. But Robert Jones, the All-American linebacker, did a great job of scraping outside taking on the tackle and making the play first down for the Wolfpack and let's go down to Adrian Carson the first update from him Adrian well run with the early emotion anxiety we see especially from the East Carolina side consider something I think we can safely call the Carolina conflict take a look at the map 94 miles separates these towns they've decided now that because they're that close within close to 100 miles they've decided to come here and settle inside of 100 yards With first down, Jordan hollers to his wide receivers in his back. He goes with Maynard, and the big fullback will have four, now five. And that's exactly what Mike Guthrie was talking about. If NC State wants to pound, they have the equipment, as Jones is there to make the hit. But when you look at the two guards who are 282 and 292, and you got a fullback close to 250, that's really formidable against a smaller defensive front. Has to be the strategy. Plus, you have to remember the quarterback, Terry Jordan, is the veteran quarterback. He's the junior. They haven't had him since the fourth game. He does a lot of reading at the line of scrimmage and play calls away from the defense. Jordan again with an audible, I would think. Movement, contact at the line of scrimmage. The average difference in the size of his of the lines, 277 on the Wolfpack side of the line, and on the defensive front, 236 is the average for the front five. And they are pointing toward East Carolina Red Mike ball. again. Offside. Defense, five yard turn. Only three of them have been taken, but on this one drive, that's four times they've jumped offside. One of the concerns you have as a coach when you bring your club to a bowl game is the layoff. And Billy Lewis told us the other day he had a lot of penalties early in the season, but then they got away from it. They had momentum, and all of a sudden they had to break. And uh, it looks like the layoff has hurt East Carolina a little bit, just jumping offside. What do you do to calm them down now? Well, I think you just got to get them on the sidelines, and as I say, just tell them it's a four-quarter football game. Barber behind the blocking of his fullback inside the five and he's down to the three. Jerry this, Dillon defensively. This isn't a good sign for East Carolina because they're having a tough time stopping him inside. The pitch and the option have been able to go outside. And I think the key to this is Terry Jordan. Terry Jordan is going away from the nose man. Kumalai, number 50, wherever he moves, he's able to make the call and go away from him. And the experience of the return of Terry Jordan is helping NC State. Second down. NC State can pick up a first down without scoring the touchdown. Hit hard at the line of scrimmage is downs. He will have maybe a half on the play, and that's about it. Jones, one of the first men, along with Grandison, who comes up from his free safety position to make the tackle. Watch the penetration of the defensive line. You see the penetration across the line of scrimmage. They beat the offensive line in North Carolina State, allowed Greg Grandison, number five, to make the tackle. Now, in the past, North Carolina State has liked the over-the-top play. But they've had success going outside. Not so sure they won't run an option or a toss sweep. 
12th play of the drive. Over the top, touchdown, North Carolina State. Talked about going over the top. I've watched film of them. They like when they get on the one-yard line, one-and-a-half-yard line, to use that jet play to take the tailback, just take him over the top, and they were successful. Hartman to attempt the extra point as the Wolfpack tries to go up to an early 7-0 lead. He's got it. So North Carolina State on their opening drive takes it the distance. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Peach Bowl is brought to you by Isuzu. For features, styling, and price, there's no comparison. And by Red Lobster, for the seafood lover in you. Well, the red and white of North Carolina State, very impressive on their opening drive as they took it right down the field, aided by some penalties, which actually they didn't need, Mike. Ron, they've had six games where they've gained over 200 yards rushing, and the closer they get to 200 yards today, they'll win this football game. East Carolina has to stop them, but on the other side, don't count Jeff Blake out at any time because, as I said, 36 plays of over 25 yards this year. They're a big play offensive football team. So what you're saying is uh, East Carolina, for those that are not familiar with them, they are accustomed to playing from behind. They can play from behind. They can strike fast. The, Jeff Blake's like Doug Flutie in the Cotton Bowl of the year when he had six pass receptions in the first half, four were for touchdowns. It's the same kind of way Jeff Blake can strike quickly. Kick is going to come down to Deion Johnson at the eight. All the way out to the 42, now the 43-yard line. 36 on the return. Let's take one more look at the touchdown. Mike, up and over the top. Well, you want your tailback to get behind the line of scrimmage and go over the top, just leap Whoa. over. A good block by the fullback. May have started a little he too may, early in the backfield. But I, I didn't notice that at the time, but I think you're right. I think he was moving a little bit before the ball was snapped. 6.09 on the drive. And Buren is the lone setback for the Pirates. Quick out pass. If you see the arm on the youngster as he zips it out there to Johnson, it'll be a gain of about five on the play as Reed and Sebastian Savage have the cover for North Carolina State. Average plays a game for East Carolina during the season. They've had 72 plays. The closer they get to 72 plays, the better chance they have to win this football game. But they need the big play. Deion Johnson's the guy to give it to him in the 27. This time Daniels is the setback. Gets the handoff, goes left side. And for the first time today, East Carolina is on the Wolfpack side of the 50. That's David Merritt, the junior out of Raleigh, who comes up to make the stick on him. Ron, football is an easy game. It's an easy game to coach, easy game to play, easy game to watch. And when you run the football well, you have a chance to win. North Carolina State on defense against Billy Lewis's team has to take away one dimension. They have to take away the running game. East Carolina's on the average 129 on the run. If they can have some success running the football, ch chances are they'll have success throwing the football. You see on the third and short, the two tight ends. Puts it on his hip, throws the pass complete to his tight end. That's Fisher inside the 30 to the 29. 19 yards, and it is that kind of gambling spirit that brought the Pirates to a 10 and 1 record this year. It's interesting. Luke Fisher, the tight end for East Carolina, has caught 35 passes during the regular season. 33 of them have been for first down, so he's the third down receiver they like to go to. He just blocked. Delayed, shot to the flat, good pass by Jeff Blake. Blake, under pressure, gets by one, now he's going to run it. 
25 and is neck tied and here comes the flag down. Ooh, that was a shot. I have a feeling that's not going to be the five yard variety, Mike. That'll be 15. See, here's the extra dimension that Jeff Blake gives you. He's an accurate passer, but he has the ability to scramble. Face mask, five yards. Here comes the pressure from the backside. He avoids the tackle, now takes off, picks up good yardage, and then the penalty will be tacked on. <laughs> I think NC State is extremely fortunate not to have had a 15-yard penalty on that. And I agree with you. Okay, Jeff Blake is just such an exciting player quarterback. 7-0. North Carolina State on top. Five minutes and 55 seconds left in what has been a very hurried opening quarter here from Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Johnson comes in motion. They use him to crack with the block. Pass is caught by the tight end Fisher again. Mike Reed wrestled him down. Good for 13 yards. Luke Fisher, 6'3", 237 pounds senior, just curled over the middle. Jeff Blake had the option to throw the ball to his back out of the backfield who was wide open, but he looked and saw Jeff Saw Luke Fisher open over the middle for a big game. Play action. Wide open in the end zone. 7-6 to six our score as Van Buren just sneaked out. Nobody picked him up. Jeff Blake made that play, Ron, with the, be with the best fake that he could make. They lined up in a triple eye. You thought that they were down on the three-yard line. They'd run it on first down. Good call by Billy Lewis and the East Carolina coaching staff. Good fake. Dan Buren out in the flat for the touchdown. Anthony Brenner to attempt the X point to try to tie us up. Gets a good pass. Kick is up. And we are tied. Well, I don't know what kind of batteries they're running on, but uh, ECU does just keep going and going. They've come right back and tied up this ball game at seven apiece. Six plays, 57 yards, and also give a world of credit to that 36-yard kick return by Johnson, which set things going for them and gave them decent field position. So I think we have demonstrated here that both of these offenses, they may do it a little differently, but both can make the other defense go back and take a long look at the chalkboard after their sequence. That's very important for East Carolina to answer the call. The defense gave up some yardage in the running game, which they were concerned about. But they went right back down the field, answered the call, and made it a 7-7 ball game. Brenner will kick it off for East Carolina. Barber and Lawrence are the two deep men. And it's going to be taken by one of the upbacks at the 45, and I believe it's Downs. All the way out to the 35-yard line. Well, that's Cooper, number 48, rather than 45. Let's look at this touchdown. Now, the tight end's going to go inside. The fullback, number 33, is going to go into the flat. Box number 20, the corner. Take the fake of Jeff Blake, the quarterback. Standing still. Van Buren gets behind Dwayne Washington. Linebacker's also trying to pick him up. Wide open in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Jordan, play action. Wants to throw. Zings it complete. Davenport almost at the 50-yard line. And that's good for 13 yards. Terry Jordan with a good play fake of, of his own and then throwing the ball to Charles Davenport, the 6'4", 208 pound senior receiver. He was a quarterback, Ron, in 1988. Gained 124 yards against us as an option quarterback throwing the football. Uh, and I liked him back then and I think he's made a good transition to wide receiver. So he can throw the football. Mike, also look at field position for North Carolina State. Second time after that 13-yard pass play. They have not had to scrimmage with anything 
close to poor position, have they? They have been able to get good field position against special teams and able to with a good return by Downs. 7-7 seven, seven our count. Clock shows 4 minutes and 38 seconds left to play in this opening quarter. The 1992 Peach Bowl. Next year will be played on January the 2nd in prime time. That has already been announced and it will be indoors at the new Georgia Dome, which is being completed right now. Whenever North Carolina State breaks their eye formation, they like to throw the football and draw. Flags go down and East Carolina appears to be offsides again as Aubrey Shaw made the reception. Now the play has been whistled down. Let's see if, if they were drawn offside this time. stop the play if the defense makes contact you also can stop it but here it was a legal procedure puts North Carolina in a long yardage situation something they haven't had to do second and long for North Carolina State Williams and George the split backs this time at second down and long Jordan to set the screen puts it up in the air and I'll tell you what if one of the offensive linemen had not played defensive back and tackling the linebacker Ken Burnett might have come up and taken that for six points and let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch guys just a reminder quarterback Terry Jordan broke both bones both the ulna and radius in his left forearm in the fourth game of the year just about down at the wrist uh, he had an external fixation cage, basically wires and screws into that arm for almost two months. Now, he is back playing with a big concern for the Wolfpack offense. Will he be able to pitch the ball with his left hand on the option to the left? He has pitched the ball only once in that first long drive this afternoon. I call the three of three on third down conversions, but they're not going to convert this one as Greg Gardell comes across and knocks him down for the loss. And for the first time today, we'll see the punting unit for North Carolina State. Greg Gardell is one of those tough defensive linemen, undersized, 6'2", 244 pounds. He comes off the block. Jordan starts the run. He makes the play from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Just a tough, heady football player. Mr. Kilpatrick, his numbers, 39.4, his longest 52. And he should be aided by the win just a bit. Deion Johnson is the deep man. And a high pass. They're coming after him, and he does a great job to get it away. And is going to be taken by Crumpler, the tight end. Crumpler ran along and picked up the ball at the 40-yard line. What an outstanding job of getting the punt away. And let's take another look at it. Kilpatrick. Like this is well over his head. Great job by Tom Kilpatrick. He has enough presence of mind to know just to move to his right a little bit and kick the football. Saved North Carolina State. So let's take a break. We're tied at seven. Happy New Year, everybody, from Atlanta, Georgia. East Carolina comes back on offense and the numbers on Blake four of six for 42 yards and at last drive in fact Mike he was perfect four of four for 42 yards well, he's got the rhythm now okay he's in he's in step quick pitch Johnson fumbles the football still loose and will be recovered by Blake oh my goodness North Carolina State came close to picking up the first huge break of this ball game. Brought Deion Johnson in the backfield. East Carolina, number 27. He's a wide receiver, but he has speed, and they try to get the ball to him outside. Looked like he tried to run before he could have the football. Jeff Blake, widely alert, picks up the football. Here's a second look. There's the dead pitch. It just hits off his inside shoulder pad. He just didn't, didn't look it in. Then takes a real hit from Mark Thomas. Blake zings it, incomplete at the 39, obscured by his teammates on the sideline, and we had to wait for a moment for the call, and now it's going to be third down, and the line to make is all the way out to midfield. Well, they're capable with this big play offense, but you know, they had great field position on the 40-yard line. Now they're back inside their own 30. Kelly Lewis likes Deion Johnson in these kind of situations. Speed receiver down the field.
He has got it. And that will be enough for the first down, plus five. Gallimore, I don't believe it, 33 yards. When you decide to rush the passer, you have to do different, you have to either send some linebackers or get a rush out of a four-man front. North Carolina State is trying to get a rush out of three defensive linemen. That is why Jeff Blake had so long. Look at the pass protection here because there's only three people rushing the quarterback. He had time to wait for Hunter Gallimore to get by the sticks for the first down. Johnson in motion as they roll the pocket. Intercepted by MC State at Savage. Cuts across field and will be stopped at the 45-yard line. Ron, Jeff Blake makes the stop. Ron, both these teams are opportunistic football teams, and they make turnovers happen. Sebastian Savage, that ball just wasn't thrown very well by Jeff Blake, but Sebastian Savage made a mistake here after the interception. Ball's thrown to him. He should have stayed on this sideline because once he misses, that block's missed. All his defensive players are on the other side. He's all by himself on the other side, so he made a mistake not standing to the boundary, but turns the ball over back to North Carolina State. Interception number six for him this year. First team all ACC. Here comes Jordan on the keep. Gets one block and boy, he gets a real shot at the 48 from Bielton Cotton. See, that looked like a busted play. I know it's the freeze option, but it looked like Anthony Barber, number 24, didn't even come out with him. He didn't have a pitch man. Look and see that that guy's not there. It's and he still wound up with, with uh, seven on the play. It's a key stat right there, rushing yards. I still believe East Carolina's going to get some kind of rushing game going. North Carolina State keeps piling up the yards. It's in their favor to win this football game. Straight ahead, and you can see the feet go right out from under Greg Maynard. As old uh, Gremlin, the turf Gremlin, reached up and grabbed him. Well, Robert Jones, the All-American linebacker, is really active in the middle. Seems like he's played forever at East Carolina. Just uh, 6'3", 234-pound senior. Very good against the run. Drops well in the pass. I'm sure the pro people have their eye on him. Third down. About a yard and a half. The line to make is the 44. at 15 yards. North Carolina State's able to alternate tailbacks. Anthony Barber and Gary Downs. They're going to bring Gary Downs here and just watch the hole that opens here. Looks like a pass action. Good block by Maynard. And then the cutback by number 45, Greg Downs. Gary Downs, he was able to go to the back side and pick up his yardage. Scott Jones with one of the key blocks, number 79, a big sophomore from Conover. Tied at seven, our score. Going to be the last play of this opening quarter as they go with Barber. Has the speed to get outside, and he'll be bumped out just inside the 20-yard line. And with that, the first quarter has come to an end. So let's take a break. East Carolina 7 and North Carolina State 7. North Carolina State scored first. An extremely impressive opening drive in the ball game. Then East Carolina came back the second time they had the ball and put seven on the board. And that's how we stand as we open the second quarter. Looks like they're setting something up to go into the short side of the field here. Barber will take it for a couple. And Anthony, who is not very big at 5'9", 175, inside, once somebody grabs a hold of a jersey, uh, he's just about done. What happens a lot of times in a game plan is East Carolina plays a four-deep secondary and their strong safety, Fred Walker. Even if North Carolina State puts the formation into the short side of the field, which they just did on that play, they will not, East Carolina will not bring the strong safety into the short side of the field. So in essence, when you put an extra man, an extra tight end to that side, you have the advantage. And I look for North Carolina State to work into the short side of the field a lot against East Carolina today. Then, if they start to hurt you, East Carolina has to do something with their defensive line, move them over a little bit to compensate for the strong safety being to the field. So far in this ballgame, the offenses have been well ahead of the defenses. 
Well, timing. Again, when you prepare for a bowl, it's a choppy time because you take some times off. Here again, the average yards per rush, North Carolina State leading. That also was accentuated by that huge loss in the fumble play a while ago as East Carolina hasn't run the ball as much or attempted it as much as NC State. The pitch to Downs. He will be inside the five. 14 yards in the running play. Now you had to like that play call if you're North Carolina State because third and short yardage and they faked the ball up to Greg Maynard to 241 pound fullback and then ran the option and it was just a quick pitch. It wasn't really an option, it was a pitch to get the ball outside the Gary Downs number 45. Could have been a check off at the line of scrimmage by Terry Jordan. Downs now four carries for 45, Barber seven for 44. Jordan throws it back, caught with the tight end for the touchdown, Harrison. Ron, another good play call by North Carolina State, but Ken Burnett, the linebacker, number 54, from East Carolina was there. He just couldn't make the play. Ball thrown too well by Terry Jordan to Todd Harrison, number 84. Got to be impressed with Jordan. He may have missed everything after the first four games but he doesn't look very rusty does he no he's back and his timing is i mean everything's on for him so far in this ball game david hartman puts his team up by seven watch the good fake by terry jordan now the tight end comes across the formation there's the throw. Look at number 54, Ken Burnett, just a little bit to the inside. And look at the feet of Todd Harrison, number 84, being able to go inside the pylon. There's the fake. Watch 54. He has the tight end. Can't catch up to him. Watch Harrison after he makes the catch get in that end zone. Terry Jordan, a happy quarterback. So the first turnover of the ball game results in a touchdown for the other teams, and we'll put an asterisk by that. I had thought for a moment that one of the plays that you had to put a star by was that on third down at 28 when East Carolina converted it, but they throw the interception, NC State. Very opportunistic, as you said, and very good about that, and they push it in the end zone. Ron, they're both teams that are opportunistic. Both are tied fourth in the NCAA giveaways takeaway and you have to be able to take that advantage that you have right there. Look at your North Carolina State's head. Go ahead, Ron. 21st of the AP poll, fifth time in school of history to win nine plus regular season games. And it would be a school record if they win here today. Fouble to kick it off of the Wolfpack. Johnson, one yard deep. Well, here's the capsule of East Carolina and the season that they have had. 10 and 1, 12th in the AP poll. First ball since 78. They broke 100 school records. Their quarterback, Blake, broke 32 alone. And remember this, the last game that they lost was the first game they played this year up at Champaign-Urbana against Illinois. And Illinois, at the end of the game, there was controversy at, at the end of that one, and the Illini won it. Sweep will come out to the 26-yard line as Van Buren tried to, to get something going, maybe a gain of three on the play. That's about it. David Merritt defensively. Ron, I know you've been impressed with this also, the crowd that East Carolina has behind them. I, I'm telling you, for, for people who aren't here, this is a heavy East Carolina crowd that's followed this football team. They have support. Got a great AD in Dave Hart, and that program's on the rise. They need a league. Blake sets incomplete. He wanted Fisher's tight end. Couldn't get it to him at the 30-yard line. It was Mark Thomas, who has had a very good ball game early on, applying pressure on the quarterback. I don't want to go back to that league. They need to be in a league. They either need to go in a league with Tulsa and Southern Mississippi and Louisville, the teams that are independents right now, 
or the NCAA should step in and say, hey, ACC, you take East Carolina, SEC, you take Louisville, Big Ten, you take Cincinnati, but get the teams that don't have a league affiliation in football into some league. Third down, the line to make just shy of the 33. Swings this one out to Daniels, and that is a great open field hit by Mike Reed. Reed just came up just after he made the reception, locked onto him, and knocks him down for a loss. Ron, North Carolina State's a big zone team, and what you do in zone is you drop back in your area, and then you break on the ball and make the tackle, and that's exactly what you said Mike Reed was able to accomplish on that play. Sat in his zone, was able to make the play. John Jett. He will be kicking away to the Labell George, who's dropped very deep back to the 35. And a good thing he did. A little bit of an 80 win here. George backs up all the way to the 30. And he'll have about 10 yards on the return. So let's take a break. 12-34, remaining until halftime, 14-7. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Peach Bowl is brought to you by Isuzu. For features, styling, and price, there's no comparison. And by United. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Well, one of the uh, pirate backers, I hope. Isn't that a little hair of the dog from last evening? Straight ahead with the big fullback. Maynard takes it for three, maybe four yards as Kumalai, the junior out of North Farmington, Michigan, comes over to make the stop. A key for North Carolina State in this ball game is to get number 86. Right here, Jerry Dillon out where you only have six people in the box. If they have six people in the box, they're going to run the football. And that's what they're able to do with this formation of going to a slot. They're pulling Dylan out. Now he's inside, so they should throw the football here. See him coming with the blitz. Jones is picked up. Pass is complete to the tight end. Harrison has the first down, plus five, and now about eight more yards downfield. Chris Hall is there to make the stop, and there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Let's check it out at the 50. Terry Jordan's reading Jerry Dillon, number 86. He came inside that time, so they threw the football. He stays out, they run it. Illegal motion, offense, five yards. Big penalty against North Carolina State because they were crossed the 50-yard line. We're in much better field position. You like this? I like this tight end. Tyler Todd Harrison, 6'4". 255 pounds senior. He catches the ball well. He blocks. Three-year starter. Injured early, but has uh, come on well. 15 receptions coming into this one for 205 yards. And he got his second touchdown of the year. That one just a few moments ago. Jordan sets well. Dumps it across the middle. Stick pretty good on Aubrey Shaw and the junior out of Parksville, South Carolina. will take it out to the 46-yard line and an injury on the play is Burnett who made the tackle. You can see it looks like that arm is a little bit numb. It's a third tailback that North Carolina State has used. When you see the linebackers drop deep and they, I've been watching East Carolina, they drop deep. You like to throw the delays to back underneath them and that's what they tried to do with Aubrey Shaw. Third down, the line to make just inside the 47 of East Carolina. They show blitz and here they come. Jordan, new place to go. Jerry Dillon, 11 yard loss. That's only the fourth play of the game that North Carolina State has lost yardage on. They were plus on 25 plays. Again, remember that penalty they had because that stopped that drive. That put them in long yardage situations. They brought Jerry Dillon, the outside linebacker, inside. Here he comes with the blitz, and they were able to put pressure on Terry Jordan. Kilpatrick into punt, and you remember the job he did the last time he kicked. How in the world he kept it from getting blocked? Well, you saw on the replay. This time, wobbly kick the good distance. 
Johnson. Good open field hit, and he'll be knocked down by Shad Santee. So let's take a break. Wolfpack still leading by touch. Coaches are always concerned when you go back to a bowl game that you have so much layoff time, the special teams are affected. Here's a nice tackle by Shad Santee, number two on Deion Johnson, to keep them from getting any kind of good field position. Blake in the option will give it off in the run to Van Buren. And for the first time this afternoon, East Carolina picks up a first down rushing with 10 yards or better. Well, that's important because if they can get their running game going, if they can have some success, they only average 129 per game all through the year. They're basically a throwing football team. They have the Miami formations and Miami pass offense, and then they've got an option offense built in also. But if they can have some success running the football, it'd go a long way for them today. Good block that time by Tom Scott. That huge one out there at the left tackle. In there out of Rose Hill. Go to the running play. Try to run behind Scott again, and they do. He'll have five yards, maybe six. You have the feeling that when Scott is not at home in Rose Hill, that the town is literally a lot smaller since he weighs close to 350 pounds. And if they've got a McDonald's there, they'd like to have him home. <laughs> You know, Ron, again, go back to, I think, both strategies of both teams. They're both trying to play defense with six people in the box and using the seventh man in pass coverage, and uh, that's why East Carolina is now able to run the football. But look for Jeff Blake to fake that play and come out and roll out away from that action. Well, three running plays in a row. First time we've seen this sequence from East Carolina, and they will have the first down, plus six, now seven and eight yards more. And let's go down on the sideline, Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry. You mentioned three running plays in a row. They may have seen the fact that Ricky Logo, the starting nose guard, is not in the game. Now, after the season was over, prior to coming down here, he aggravated the stress factors in his right foot. He's supposed to be wearing an orthoplast splint like this right here. His right fourth and fifth metatarsal bones in his foot have stress fractures. He's been limping around on the sidelines. He is out of the game. And backup Daryl Beard was in a minute ago. And now Logo has shown back in the football game. Back up there. Now they're back in the seven-man front, too. So now Jeff Blake probably should throw the football. Just as you said that, the safety dropped off another five yards. Little play action. And they set screen. It's a tight end Fisher. He will have the first down inside the 25 to the 24. Boy, Luke you, is a former linebacker. He doesn't catch it like a linebacker, though, does he? No, and you talk about a chess game going on coaching-wise. Now, North Carolina State goes with a seventh man to try to help against the run. Jeff Blake wisely throws a delay pattern to Luke Fisher in flat. So, again, and now it becomes a chess game whether you want to try to stop the run of the pass. If I'm North Carolina State on defense, you prove to me you can run the football. I'm not going to let Jeff Blake throw it. Fisher, three catches for 44 yards. Van Buren has a couple to we'll take it down in the vicinity of the 20-yard line. Mike, just what you were talking about, when NC State starts to bring more folks toward the line of scrimmage, those safeties are dropping off anywhere from 15 to 17 yards off the ball. Well, they really are because they're trying to protect against the big play uh, of Jeff Blake. But both quarterbacks are seeing the same type of defensive strategy, you know, trying to stop the run with six people in the box and then trying to play against the pass. Rushing yardage, NC State 110 yards, but now East Carolina getting a little bit on track with the running game. On second down, and they need the 13-yard line. Blake to Van Buren, has the first, inside the 10, it is first and goal, Pirates, and now here comes in a late market. Five yard, face mask, on the defense, first down. Turner made the tackle, and as you can hear the official say, it was incidental. Only five yards. Second time against NC State. You see that East Carolina has them outmanned and outnumbered uh, on the running game, and there's the face mask at the end of the play by Ricky Turner. You see Ricky took his hand right off of it. He was trying to get the headgear, realized he had the face mask, and, of course, by then uh, the flag had already been thrown. So it's got to be first and goal, and they'll mark it just inside the five-yard line. Last time down here, play action pass on first down. Could run the option down here. They like the option with Jeff Blake. They run option. 
will not pitch it as the pitch man was covered up. Deion Johnson, in fact, Deion had been tackled back before the play was over. Well, they like the option inside the 10-yard line. NC State probably has seen, seen that in films and, uh, and played the option very well on that play. Now you've got to get some kind of play where you get Jeff Blake on the rollout pass on the corner where he can run pass against the North Carolina State defense. Blake is not the kind of quarterback that one glance and then he's going to take off and run. And he, when he goes back to throw, he's there to throw, isn't he? He's a passing quarterback first. He wants a chance to throw the football. And if it's not there, he'll take off. Incomplete at the goal line. Gallimore is who he wanted. That's what I thought. Mike Reed came through and made a stick on him. And it'll be third down. Deep drops by the North Carolina State linebackers here. They may try to bring somebody underneath like Luke Fisher underneath, try to get him the ball and let him try to run it in from about the five or four yard line. But again, good zone coverage by North Carolina State where they go back, sit in their zone, read the eyes of Jeff Blake. When he throws the ball, they break on the ball and knock it down. Pretty good job by NC State. Third down. This is where they like to look at Luke Fisher and uh, Deion Johnson on this side. Puts it up quickly, looking for driver, and it is incomplete. Flag is down. Dead ball, dead ball, delay game on offense, five yards. Boy, East Carolina got a break on that one, Mike. Well, they got a chance to see their third down defense and throw the fade. <laughs> they know the fade's not there. Uh, driver uh, just was covered well on the fade play as Sebastian Savage. And for people sitting at home saying there was contact, yes, there was. But remember one thing, 32 Savage was squared away toward the football. Now, if he had had his back to it and then looked up late after the contact, then it would have been offensive interference. You're right. Good, good I mean, positioning by Savage. Now, here's where you got to look to Luke Fisher now. Number 91 is a player I think that Jeff Blake's got to try to get the ball to. Got him over the middle. Will not make it to the end zone. Fisher. He will be racked at the, well, the original line of scrimmage, the four and a half yard line. And coming on is John Jett, along with Anthony Brenner, and they will be going for the field goal attempt. See, that delay of game hurt them because the five yards hurt them on that play. But again, Luke Fisher, 33 times this year on the 35 receptions he had were third downs for first down situation or to gain a first down. Not necessarily third down, but he's the possession guy that Jeff Blake wants to go to. 22-yard attempt by Brenner. They're short a man. Mitch Crumpler coming on late. Second delay of game penalty. Special teams again, Ron, even if it's a penalty on special teams, but had somebody come on late. And I'm not so sure that Carl Lester Crumper was the right guy to go on because he just ran on the field to give him the extra guy, but I don't think he was the right. You game. know what? They better be glad they had the lay of game. Did, no one else went on, did they? They've already Dead got ball. The lay of game. Offense, Mike, five yard They already had 11 men on the field. They got 11 out there now. He just came off and they still That's have 11. That's exactly right. That's what the players were saying. We're not snapping <laughs> the ball. We got 12. That was very smart and showed poise on their part. Lester had to fit in there somewhere, and he just didn't fit. <laughs> well, I thought they already had one wing blocker on the left side. High pass. Kick is on the way, and he got it. And our new score, 14-10, to 10, North Carolina State. And let's send it down to Adrian Karsten. Adrian, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, you don't go from a 5-6 and six record last year to a 10-1 and one record this year unless you believe. That's been their slogan on the ECU sidelines all season long. A lot of coaches, a lot of players say that a slogan doesn't do much for you. But Coach Lewis and his team said it's been more than that. And they've had, well, they've got over 20,000 ECU fans here, believe, as well. Ron, I think that Eddie Fisher, I, I don't, I'm not positive of this, you and I should know this, but I think he sang a song, I believe, way back in the 50s. I, you know, I, I know, I'm familiar with the song. I'm not sure it was Eddie Fisher. I, and I'm not I don't so think sure so. it was I believe either, but it's, I remember the words <laughs> in I believe. 
Well, be sure to be with us tomorrow night because I do believe there's another hefty dose of college basketball. First, it's 7 o'clock, number 7, Ohio State. And, of course, that means Mr. Jimmy Jackson hosting the surprising Penn State Nittany Lion in what proves to be a great game. 9 o'clock, then it's Purdue against North Carolina, the number 8 Tar Heels, and in Weber State and Montana at midnight. All tomorrow evening right here on ESPN. checking with the truck trying to do further investigation on your question uh, Mr. Godfrey. Yeah, they're all young people down there. I gotta remember that song. Line drive kick and Savage will let this one go into the end zone and then out. No large I beg your pardon 35 rather than 32. So they'll get it at the 20 yard line. And just what we had anticipated as they fight for supremacy of the state of North Carolina East Carolina and North Carolina State have put on an awfully good show in his first half of play and we still have 641 remaining until halftime average gain on first down North Carolina State you look at the scoring drive nine plays 61 yards just under four minutes and Brenner with the field goal Go back to what I was saying average gain on first down 6.1 for NC State and for East Carolina 3.7 Barber, 5, 10, make it 12. Wow, what a quick burst right up the middle. I said he's not big when he gets in traffic, but when he is speeding past traffic, well, that's a different story. Well, he just gave that statistic 6.1 yards, but look at the double team. Watch the offensive guard come off on the linebacker. The hole just opens up big time for Anthony Barber, number 24. And again, that's the key. They have to run the ball right at East Carolina. Plus the fact that East Carolina will not see very many passing downs that NC State doesn't want to throw when it keeps giving up big yardage on first down. they got to start stopping them on first down. Don't you think? First down's a key down. And here they do a pretty good job and get the ball. Maynard with the fumble. Recovered by the Pirates. Derek Taylor was one of those who was in the middle of the action. And I think, yeah, it is. It's Derek Taylor who makes the recovery. Here's you're going to see just a give to Maynard, the fullback. Watch the ball pop out here. There's the ball. He's still standing up. Good tackle by Tony Davis, 53, to cause the fumble. First turnover against North Carolina State. You remember the Pirates threw the interception, and the Wolfpack came back and took advantage with the touchdown. Let's see if East Carolina can do the same. They're down by four. Blake with the play action. Lob it. He's got a man. Whoa, contact. No flag. Pretty good coverage by Mike Reed, number three. There was a bump. Mike, here I disagree. He One more step, and he catches it for a touchdown. He did impede his uh, his progress there. It's close. I mean, there's a bump there. What? Watch the right side of your screen. Watch number three. There's the little bump right here. See, he knocked, he knocked him out of his lane at that juncture. Got a chance for it. Could have been called. Second down and 10. Remember, NC State took advantage of their turnover for a touchdown. East Carolina needs to do the same. The running play down to the 21-yard line with Van Buren, and he's close to the first down. About a yard, maybe a yard and a half shy from where they have spotted it. This is where Jeff Blake is dangerous on a third and short yards because they like to throw the football on third and short. Good look at Jeff Blake, senior from Sanford, Florida. 6'1", 194 pounds, and as we mentioned, has broken 32 school records in his time at East Carolina. See the linebackers creeping up. Ball is on the ground, and Blake did everything he could do just to recover it, let alone pick up the first. It'll be fourth, and this will be a 42-yard field goal attempt if that's what they go for. Now you have to fit the North Carolina defense here for being able to hold back. Here you're going to see the replay on the option, Jeff Blake, but see the penetration, number 53, 
makes good penetration. Tony Davis, he's the one that caused the fumble. Anthony Brenner to attempt the field goal. North Carolina State leading by four. Tries to whittle it down to one. His career long is 51 yards. That plenty of distance and does not have the accuracy off to the right. Let's take one more look at that. We have talked over the recent weeks at the goalpost in there being moved in. And look how close he is. The line of scrimmage and has got to be knocked down after a gain of one. Well, here are today's turnovers in this 24th Peach Bowl game. Both of these teams, giveaways, takeaways, rank fourth in the country in the NCAA statistics. There you see NC State and East Carolina behind Florida State 9 and 2, Washington 11 and 0, Penn State 10 and 2. But it, NC State's defense did not allow East Carolina to take advantage of their turnover. If there's anything that drives a coach batty, it is not taking care of business and putting it on the ground. Barber will have maybe one, and that'll be it. It'll be third down. As right there defensively was Bernard Carter. Mike, and this gives me an opportunity as we're about to go into four minutes to play in this first half. There have been more coaching jobs coming open this year than I can ever remember in college football. In fact, we just had one as of yesterday right here in Atlanta with Bobby Ross leaving. Well, I think Billy Lewis is somebody they're going to consider here. But I think, I think the times have changed. I think the owners in the NFL are guys who didn't come up through football. They weren't coaches. Uh, they weren't people associated with football. They're businessmen. And I think the same thing's happening in the college. You have ADs who are former SIDs or business people. And I don't think they have the empathy for coaches that they need to have. Just firing them all too fast. <laughs> Interesting point. Jordan sets it up. All oh, the middle. Incomplete. Aubrey Shaw. Maybe a tad behind him, but he should have caught it, I believe. It was uh, catchable. As Jordan put it there. And NC State will have to punt. One more thing about it. You really think that... Uh, Billy Lewis in East Carolina, maybe you think he's the top candidate uh, for the Georgia Tech job? I really believe if they don't move an assistant up quickly, like in the next 24 hours, that it will turn and it will turn to Billy Lewis's opportunity because he coached at Georgia Tech. He's at Georgia for many years. But I'll tell you, he's done a nice job here at East Carolina. Oh, and the, boy, do the fans love him. Pressure from East Carolina. This is a dandy, dandy punt by Kilpatrick. Johnson has to run away with it. Put a mark by that one all the way down to the 22 yard line. That's a 51 yard kick, and he's cutting or kicking into what is a quartering win against him. Excellent job. Well, it's a double dose of comprehensive NFL playoff coverage this weekend. On Saturday, kick it off with NFL game day at 11.30. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Joe Theismann, and the entire crew preview the Saturday matchups. And news stories before the action. Then it's NFL primetime at 7.30, rounding up the highlights and analysis after it's over. Then on Sunday, join them again for game day at noon, primetime at 7. All of the best NFL coverage this weekend, right here on ESPN. Nothing doing for Van Buren this time. As Bill Ray Haynes comes over from that left linebacking spot, and Clayton Henry also was out there to help on the stop. I think we're due to see a, some type of quick screen by East Carolina, some type of screen to try to help Jeff Blake, even though they're not getting a lot of pass rush. North Carolina State has not rushed a passer with more than three people or four people this entire day, but a quick screen to try to get the ball out to Deion Johnson quick. Under three minutes to play until halftime in this 24th Peach Bowl game. Blake zips out the pass to Johnson, needs one block, and he gets it. Hang on. Five, ten. Nope, they're going to say he stepped out of bounds before he got to the first down marker. So third down, they got to take care of business with just a few inches, but they did stop the clock at 231. Well, that's the quick screen I was just talking about. The Jeff Blake goes back, throws the ball out to Deion Johnson. The blockers get in front of him, and, he, you know, with his speed, if you can just get the ball in his hands, that's like a running play for most teams. You don't have a real great running game in East Carolina. You don't have the established tailback, so get the ball out as quick as you can to a speed receiver. Let him be a running back. Also explain why the wide receiver all of a sudden came free and put his hands wide out to the side. He was trying to tell that line judge that he was not clipping on Savage so that he wouldn't reverse that play and bring it back. 
Savage is very smart. He does a good job at that cornerback. You can see why he was an all-conference performer. And he has a great name, Sebastian Savage. <laughs> <laughs> Halftime report. Plays of the year. Who's going to be number one? And also some first-half analysis of this 24th Peach Bowl. Nine of 16 with one interception. 99 yards and one touchdown. Those are the numbers on Blake in his opening half. And Blake will take it straight ahead. Don't be surprised. Well, it'll be stopped for a moment. Going to say, don't be surprised if Carolina might not use one here. They've still got three timeouts because you're making substitutions. As soon as the uh, chains are set, they'll whistle it back in. Got a lot of time with their offense. Fourteen to ten, North Carolina State. Blake has it complete, just shy of the 50-yard line, and that's Gallimore. Hunter is a senior out of Wilson, North Carolina, good for 15 yards. Against zone coverage, what East Carolina is doing is bringing crossing routes underneath just to try to occupy the linebackers long enough to get Hunter Gallimore behind them, and that's why he's open in the zone. About to go under two minutes until halftime. Blake tries to get out of harm's way, and Big John Aikens is here to knock him down for the second sack by Wolfpack today. John Aikens, number 96, was able to get to Jeff Blake, and again, a three-man rush. Now, that's a good sign for North Carolina State. You know, you're able to get to him with a three-man rush, but the pattern was so deep down the field that that's what took so long. It wasn't necessarily that the offensive lineman didn't do a good job, just the route was so deep. So there's a timeout been called on the field. 147 left until halftime as the big peach came down. The signaling in 1992, giant fireworks display downtown. Over 100,000 people in downtown Atlanta. Blake going to go long, and he's got a man at the five. Touchdown, Gallimore. Big play offensive football team. You can't allow them the big play. North Carolina State's only given up. Three touchdowns of over 25 yards. That's a 55-yard touchdown pass from Hunter Gallimore. But what made it happen was Jeff Blake didn't scramble. It's like we talked about. He had to scramble for yardage, but he wanted the pass play. He sat in there. He sat in there, threw the ball deep for the touchdown to Gallimore. Anthony Brenner. 17 to 14. The Pirates of East Carolina have forged on top with 139 left until halftime. Watch Jeff Blake as he goes back to set up to throw the football. He sits in there and he has time to wait for Gallimore to go down the field on the streak route. But what is really impressive about Jeff Blake is there. He could scramble, but he wants to sit in there and take the home run that he's known to hit and there's the touchdown to Gallimore 82 and re reaction by Jeff Blake number two big score just before halftime Boy, what a, what a, what, you took the words right out of my mouth there was Dwayne Johnson number 20 who was trailing I'm not so sure that Ricky Turner number 15 might I think he barely got a fingertip on the ball and Gallimore still concentrated enough to get, gather it in the impressive point again was that ball was thrown right on the money Yep, it sure was. 17 to 14, the Pirates. You can't give a team like East Carolina those big plays. You have to make them work the field. Lawrence and Barber, the deep men, and this is going to be very returnable. Short, taken by Cooper, and he will bring it out to the 31 yard line. And let's go down to Adrian Carson one more time. Adrian. Well, right here in the land of the free and the home of the Braves, we're used to seeing the tomahawk chop that you'll remember some Native Americans took issue with. There's a gentleman up in North Carolina who took issue with the saber slash. That gentleman was a direct descendant of Edward Teach. Who's Edward Teach? Blackbeard the Pirate. You gotta know your Jolly Roger if you're gonna work the sidelines down here. That's right, Adrian. Thank you. 
You didn't even know Eddie Fisher, and you still, now you know this guy. Screen pass will be good for close to eight, maybe nine yards. That's Chris Williams, senior from Cleveland, who comes over to, uh, to bring it out to the 38, uh, maybe the 39-yard line. I've watched both these teams practice at the respective schools. Both of them work very diligently on two-minute offense and two-minute defense. It wouldn't surprise me that they're both pretty good in this area of the game. Jordan, ball is tipped incomplete. Derek Taylor, who had to recover a moment ago, tips the pass. All right, now here are some numbers. The adjustments made by East Carolina. North Carolina State on the last three drives, lost nine, picked up ten, right here has picked up two. They need to pick up the first down right now. That's the key for them. They may have to run to get the first down. Option pitch. No place to go for Williams. Tried to run into the short side of the field, away from the strong safety again. Now East Carolina is going to get the ball back with their two-minute drill. Going to use a timeout here, force NC State, punt the football, and they still have time with 46 seconds on the clock to use their two-minute offense again. Well, I'm not sure I would kick it to Johnson right now. I mean, you've just had, as you pointed out, a momentum swing. I think I'd either kick it away from it, maybe even kick it out of bounds. But the last thing in the world you want, you're down by three points. Momentum has gone to the opponent. I certainly wouldn't want to go in trailing by ten points at halftime. And Johnson is the type of guy who could put it in the end zone for him that quickly. Well, the other thing is, if I'm East Carolina, I'm going after this punt. I'm going to try to block it. I'm going to leave Deion Johnson down there by himself. Just get whatever he can get. But I'm going to try to block it. I remember that first snap that was almost over the head of the punter. Patrick. Patrick. So yeah. now I have to, if I'm the defensive coach of East Carolina, I have to really try to put somebody on the center, try to occupy his attention, hope for a bad snap, get some pressure in there and block the stick. You're right. They're coming after him. Johnson will see nobody to help him block because his teammates, everybody went after the kicker. And they were close. Kilpatrick put on a good act, but the official comes over and said, no, nope, I'm sorry. No award on this one. I'll tell you what, he earned his, uh, his keep in that first half, though, on the high pass when he was able to get any kick away at all. And that was a kick that could have been blocked by East Carolina. Kilpatrick had the presence of mind to gather it and still get it off. This East Carolina offense is now like the basketball and be Kentucky's basketball team, Rick Pitino's team, the three-point shot. They're firing now. I mean, they're, they're behind that line. They're all going to throw. We'll look at the linebackers. And you can see three people. The other eight have dropped off extremely deep. Pass complete to Fisher, the tight end at the 39. Now they're going to hurry up. Clock now, is stopped at 28. Now if you're Jeff Blake, all you want to do now is work down that field goal range. I mean, you'd like to have a touchdown, but with the depth that North Carolina State's playing, the chances of being that, the percentages, I'm not saying they won't because they do throw the ball deep a lot, but now just work them underneath and try to get some yardage after the catch. Well, as you can see, the clock just started again. That's because he did pick up the first down, and this one will be incomplete. Now a marker has been thrown deep. And I think he's pointing the finger at Nick Wilson. We may have a holding call. Yep, against East Carolina. Coming up at the halftime, Tim Brando, Lee Corso, and Craig James. I thought I heard Lee Corso say the other night, of course I could have been not a sound mind at that particular time that he thought holding. Offense, 10 yards, spot foul, repeat first down. Nebraska would beat Miami. And I'm not sure. I know Lee's not a drinking man. <laughs> Maybe he'll elaborate on that uh, during halftime. In fact, now that you have mentioned it, I feel certain he will. Of course, it's the holiday season. Maybe he did take a minute, too. Lee 
Well, you notice only one person was making these accusations. Blake's going to scramble, and again, the old turf demon comes up and trips him up. John Akins was in pursuit. Eight ticks showing on the clock. 17 to 14, East Carolina leading. You know what's really interesting about that situation at the Orange Bowl tonight? Uh, I, I'm with you. I'm not sure that, that I would agree that Nebraska could win. However, uh, Miami's a huge favorite in that game. I'm not going to be surprised if, if Nebraska plays them well under the spread, if they play them closer than that, Mike. I think after a while, guys get tired of getting their face rubbed in it and keep told, being told that, that they're not good enough or they're, they're just, you know, not even considered. That's going to be an interesting day in college football. East Carolina, who's ranked 12th in the country, could, with a win here, put themselves in the top in 10. In the top 10, first time in the history of the school. The other side of the coin, though, as far as that thing down at the Orange Bowl is, where they're playing. There are a lot of people who might think, you know, the first championship that they won, it was done in their own backyard. And you know, as a former coach yourself, what a difference it makes when you get to play in your own backyard. And there's been many a good team who are down there and come out yep. with not good feelings. All right, now the secondary has dropped off 40 and 45 yards as Blake. Should have already thrown. Can he get it that far? Yeah, he sure can. It is tipped and intercepted by North Carolina State. That's Mike Reed who came away with the football at the five-yard line. All you so hope for. We are at halftime. Seventeen to fourteen. East Carolina leads as we go to intermission. And don't leave out Dr. Jerry Punch. Happy New Year to him as well. East Carolina, 17 to 14. And the noise you hear in the background is because the Pirates are just coming back on the field again. And Mike Godfrey, uh, they have been quite a Cinderella story. They started off just as you had told me they might. A little rocky because maybe they were a little nervous about the first ball game. But boy, have they ever settled down. They settled down. The first quarter was North Carolina State. Second quarter was East Carolina. And the statistics will prove that. But again big plays and they made the big play the long pass to Hunter Gallimore which we're going to see Jeff Blake went back to throw the football was able to dodge the rush waited look at this ball thrown right on the money to Hunter Gallimore for the big touchdown and North Carolina State can ill afford to give up the big plays now on the other side of the ball North Carolina State had success in the first half running the football here you're going to see Gary Downs they ran for 86 yards in the first quarter, but in the second quarter, they only got 19 yards. So the second quarter was owned by East Carolina. Well, right now, let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch, and he is with Dick Sheridan on the sidelines. Gentlemen. Coach, your team played an excellent staff, but some of the big plays hurt you. Well, we gave up uh, a lot of big plays, and uh, East Carolina's been making those plays all year, and if we're gonna win this ball game, we've got to eliminate that in the second half. Adjustments at halftime, Coach? Well, uh, they gave some looks on defense that, uh, that they had not shown. We've tried to adjust to those. Coach, good luck to you. Let's go over to Adrian Carson. Jeff, you hearing me at all, Tom? Coach, you said that it's important for you guys to play this game the way you played the other 11 all year long. Has any lack of bowl experience hurt you at all so far? I, I don't think so. I think in the first drive, our defense particularly was uh, uneasy, unsettled. We had the three penalties that, that really ate at them in their first drive. But I think our people after that are settled down. I think we're, we're playing the game uh, the way we need to. Uh, this thing's a long way from over because we're playing a mighty fine football team. What do you have to do in the second half to beat the Wolfpack? Well, uh, the, the biggest concern I've got is that they've taken the ball as we talked about, and they came right at us. We can't, we've got to play tougher on defense, be a little more physical on defense. Good luck, Coach, second half. Go get him. Ryan, back to you, sir. All right, thanks, Adrian. Thanks, Dr. Jerry Punch. Fine work down on the sidelines, gentlemen. 
And let's take a look at the statistics in that first 30 minutes of play. Mike, what do you see there? Well, I think the key statistic, again, is look at the first quarter rushing for North Carolina State. 86 yards. East Carolina was held to minus nine. But in the second quarter, East Carolina ran the football with some success for 51 yards. NC State got away from it a little bit, only ran for 19 yards. When you look at that average field position, it does wind up averaging out in the first half. But you remember we made the point. NC State, the first three times they had the football, had the ball in great field position. Then all of a sudden, because of turnovers and also a punt, then a score, field position changed for them, and they had to become a little bit more conservative offensively. Well, I think in the second half, they really have to open up the game a little bit more. They, they still have to run the football, but Terry Jordan's got to try to get the ball to Charles Damport, number seven, on the outside. They have not thrown the ball down the field deep, and you have to at least challenge East Carolina deep to keep them off the running game. Anthony Brenner will kick it off. NC State won the toss to begin the ball game. They deferred to the second half, and that's the reason that they are getting the football. Lawrence and Barber, the two deep men for the Wolfpack. This will come down to Reggie Lawrence. 35 and all the way out to the 41-yard line. Now that is the way to get your offense going in the second half with that kind of field position. Special, te special teams again in a bowl game with the break. Just been such a factor this bowl year. Great field position. First three drives, NC State had the ball. 126 yards, two touchdowns. The last four drives, seven yards. Good adjustments by East Carolina on defense. But again, they'll get back. North Carolina State needs to get back to what they did in the first drives. Also, as we mentioned, field position played a part in those last four possessions. Barber. Jones will nail him at the 47, maybe the 48-yard line. Tell you what, that, that's pretty good combination to draw to right there. Jones and Barber. That is excellent. Anthony Barber, number 24, the freeze option, and he was out there with a defender one-on-one, -on -one, but was able to uh, uh, juke him and get pretty good yardage on first down. You see the tackle leader. Also, the, the superlatives offensively, Barber and Downs, 103 rushing yards. And you can see the numbers on Blake in that first 30 minutes. Big fullback. He will have the first down and a couple more. Greg Maynard, the battering ram across midfield, and he will have it down to the ECU 46-yard line as Derek Taylor and Gardeal combine to make the stop. Ron, I've probably said this. I don't know how many games we've done this year, but I've probably said it every time. First five minutes of the third quarter is really important, and it's important for one of these two teams to draw on the edge. And the other thing to look for is the adrenaline that the team spends in a bowl game, how they play in the second half. Some teams sell out so much before in the first early going first half that they don't have much left in the second half. Barber, he gets tagged at the line of scrimmage. Didn't get much of a head start that time as Tony Davis, 53, a sophomore out of Boston, Mass. is there to make the stop. 12 carries now for 69 yards for him, for Barber. And they'll have him again next year. He's only a junior out of Garner, North Carolina. Aubrey Shaw comes in, replacing Barber, bringing the play from the sideline on the second down and six. They threw the delay to Aubrey Shaw the last time. A little short route over the middle. Jordan staying in the pocket. That is a great pass and catch situation to Aubrey Shaw. Jordan just stood tough. He had pressure coming all over him and delivered it right on the spot he needed to get it. Going to be short of the first down by three. I think Aubrey Shaw misread the coverage on an, on an option route, which that was. He should have broke to the outside away from man coverage, but I think he read it as zone and hook, but still made the big catch. I think you're exactly right. And it's third down, and they have to take the ball to the 35-yard line. Pitch goes to down, and he is close. I don't think he made it. No. Nope. That's Jerry Dillon, the junior from Lake Placid, Florida, who helped stretch it out. And no, not from where they have marked it down. He's going to be yard, yard and a half shot. The outside linebacker made a big play on that for East Carolina, Jerry Dillon. 
Michael, what do you do? Do you punt it or do you keep it going? As we see Davenport coming in, I think there's our answer. I think you're going to need points to beat Jeff Blake in East Carolina. I think you're going to need a bunch more. And uh, this, is a, this is a gamble, but uh, it's a gamble that Dick Sheridan feels like he has to make with that offensive team on the other sideline. Maynard, first and ten, Wolfpack. Davis and Jones, the two middle backers, come up to make the hit. See, I think with, when, you, when you're on the sideline and you're trying to figure how many points it's going to take to win and you, you get some key situations like this in short yardage and you know Jeff Blake, you want to keep him off the field. You don't want him on the field. And so if you can take these long drives, he's on the sideline over here. And you're just going to need some scores to beat him because he's capable of scoring on one play. Remember we told you off the top of the telecast that Scott Adele, the senior from Fletcher, was the best of the offensive linemen. And that's who they ran behind on that big fourth down play. Here's the pitch to Barber. Gets the juke that he's outside. Turns the corner. He'll go inside the 25 to the 24 before Grandison and Dillon combine on the stop. I'm going to tell you something. Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator, is a graduate of the University of Kentucky. I knew him back when he was at Paducah Tillman High School. Was in great shape defensively there. He sent a blitz, but Barber's speed is able to get him outside in the corner turn to make the big play. Well, you could see 15 minutes to play in the first half. The Q's out on top of Ohio State, 14 to nothing. Wow. 15 carries, 78 yards. Now for Barber. Fullback Maynard, good one-two combination, runs over a man. He is inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. That is tough running. When you look at this play, what the fake by Terry Jordan is a fake of the toss play. So it stretches you. And watch the linemen here. Watch the blocks as they come off on the defensive linemen. Here's going to be the play. Watch the fake of the toss. You can't see it. But then Greg Meaner comes back inside for the big play. Man that he almost ran over and injured was his own man. Linebacker blitz is up. Maybe one yard. Gary Downs, and that is great lateral pursuit this time by East Carolina to get outside and stop it. Well, you can see what the strategy is of East Carolina right now. They're going to blitz the second half a little bit more. Watch, here you see the receiver, Charles Davenport, blocking, and you're going to see Fred Walker come into play. Number 22, make the tackle, and also number 34, Greg Floyd. Look for some kind of rollout pass here to the right for North Carolina State. Pass completed to 16. Touchdown, North Carolina State, Robert Hinton. That should have been a three-yard catch right there, but Robert Hinton with a good spin move made that a 15-yard touchdown. It's his first catch of the afternoon. It is good for six points, and North Carolina State has gone back on top in this one. As we go to break, let's look at it one more time, and here's the pass Mike is talking about to Hinton. Caught right there, and watch what he does with it. Gets by Walker, gets by two more, keeps his balance. 21-17, our new score. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Peach Bowl is brought to you by Volkswagen. Enjoy the unique European driving experience called Farfik Nugan, only in a Volkswagen. And by Delta Airlines. We love to fly, and it shows. Welcome back to Fulton County Stadium. Last football game to be played in here. After this one, it's going to be over to the new Georgia Dome, they'll call it. And they just about have that thing complete. If you look at, what was Jordan, I, I guess, on the far side? Hey, this is a growing bowl game. I'll tell you, they do a nice job here. The support that you get in the city of Atlanta. And Robert Dale Morgan's to be commended uh, for the job that he has accomplished here. Look at this crowd. I mean, it's an enthusiastic crowd. It's a great day for a bowl game. Gray skies, but the rains have ended. Just light sprinkles just before kickoff today. The foul ball kicks it on one bounce into the end zone. 
And let's take one more look at that touchdown and the move afterwards. Should have been about a three-yard completion. Watch number 10, Robert Hinton. Just stop. This is a smash play where the guy goes to the corner. Davenport, number seven. Now watch the bad angle here of the tackle. And he's able to spin out and go for the end zone and watch him stretch out to make it a touchdown. There's again, watch the spin move. Three defenders. And it, what Four. you're talking about as far as angle, the sideline has got to be your, your other person. You're right. You have to use the sideline. Just poor angles. This is the worst field position for East Carolina today as they scrimmage for their own 20. And the crowd gets excited, but what you have to understand is offensive coordinators are not going to have splits or anything else that are going to be in favor of anything but running the football and getting some breathing room down here. Right, Mike? That's right, and that, that was a play that they had some success with with Cedric Van Buren, number 33. Eventually, watch for Jeff Blake to fake that play to Van Buren and roll out the backside and try to hit Luke Fisher coming across the middle. By the way, Billy Ray Haynes, we mentioned off the top of the telecast, averaging 10.2 tackles a game. He already has nine in this one. And it's the first series of the third quarter. Play action. Incomplete. He wanted Luke Fisher. I'll tell you, North Carolina State that had that one figured out about as well as you can, even with the tight end. They had double coverage on him over the middle. Had defended with Clayton Henry, number 88, David Merritt, number 34. But again, they tried to roll out and throw back to Luke Fisher. That's a play they've had a lot of success with all year. To give you the waggle action to try to move your linebackers with the quarterback, and then they set Luke Fisher right over the ball. But North Carolina State covered it very well. Sack. Ricky Logo, third time of the Wolfpack today. Looks like North Carolina State to me has went back to more of a standard defense where they're just trying to play their defense, their 50 defense, and keep the two linebackers inside. And they got a little bit more of a pass rush there out of Aikens, number 96. That's been a thorn in the side of the North Carolina State off and on this year, and that's pass rush. But three times they've gotten to the quarterback today. They're a team that likes to defend the, the, the field rather than put a lot of blitzes on you, but they should end up with great field position right here after this punt. John Jett waiting at the one. And NC State has the return on. This is a good coverage kick. Not real long. Liddell George. And he gets tagged by Jones, breaks off the tackle, able to have five more. 7.50 left in the third quarter. 21-17, Wolfpack. Well, it's a young East Carolina fan with the saber in hand. Nippy here in Atlanta, but nobody's feeling it right now. Ron, this is a position in the field where I think you could take a chance and gamble with either a reverse pass or something deep to Davenport right here. Good observation. Jordan now with the shifting of the defense for the Pirates comes up with an audible and they try to get outside with Barber on the run and he will have a couple. That's it. And let's go back to Tim Brando for an update. Timmy, what do you have for us? Ron, Coach Godfrey mentioned a reverse pass. How about this? Russell White to Sean Dawkins, back to Pulowski to Russell White would lead to a Greg Zomalt touchdown run. California leading Clemson seven to nothing in the first quarter at the Florida Citrus Bowl in Orlando. Against that Clemson defense, they better pull out all the stops. They better use reverses and everything because they tackle to tackle, you lose your head. That's right, Chester McLaughlin in the, in the game. Turn Chester loose. Happy New Year. Pitch to Barber. Ooh. There's a clip, and there's one flag, and now a second. And you know it really didn't have to be because the play was not going for that much. What's going to happen is NC State's going to wind up with a second down and about 18 yards to go because from coming from the spot, it was at least beyond the line of scrimmage. Two penalties in this game have really hurt NC State. The first half, they had a drive going where they were across mm -hmm. the 50-yard line. They lost. The, the, Todd Harrison caught that beautiful pass. Right, and lost yardage. They're going to lose field position here. I still think they've got to get the ball to Davenport somehow. He's the big play receiver for them. Offense, 15 yards, repeat second down. On the penalties, uh, four for 35 and five for 34. 
as you look at the season average and today as far as NC State is concerned. So now this one goes back to the 42 yard line. And the line to make is all the way down at the East Carolina 36. You're right, Mike. Now you got to pump it That's up. Huge. You got to get the ball to Davenport here. You know, the penalties, they don't look like a lot, but the timing of the penalties have hurt both teams. Intercepted by Jones. And the All American linebacker will take it down to the 31 yard line. Well, if you want to know the, the numbers on the All-American, eight tackles and now one interception for him on the day. Robert Jones. We talked about field position changing on this interception. You're going to watch Robert Jones set in the curl area, and then he's going to break on the hook route and intercept the football of Terry Jordan. Watch him set up. Now he sets in the hook zone, picks off the pass. Field position now is East Carolina's favor. Well, Jordan just for some reason became mesmerized and, and didn't see. Blake, oh, what a pass and complete at the 20. Now they're going to say incomplete. Folks, I can't tell you with three people coming after him, throwing against the grain, how in the world he even got it away, let alone threw it that fine. It's a good evaluation of coming to his left and putting the mustard on the football. He threw the football with good velocity, so he has good arm strength going both to the right and the left. The numbers on him today, 12 of 22, 181 yards. This is big, I think, as far as East Carolina is concerned. Well, they had the turnover before that they didn't turn into points. They have to turn this into points. Blake sets over the middle on the little delay. Johnson. And he will get hammered at the 24-yard line. Billy Ray Haynes continues to mount his total of tackles. Deion Johnson, that name works well in the stadium, doesn't it? Sure does. Watch Deion. He's moving in motion, and the linebackers are dropping so deep that he's able to catch the ball underneath. Now you look for him to try to break some tackles. If you're North Carolina State, Billy Ray Haynes, number 50. You really have to wrap Deion Johnson up. Third down. The line to make is the 22-yard line. Movement by East Carolina. She'll now make it a third down and about eight. <laughs> and Bill Lewis shakes his head saying, guys, how many times Dead have ball. we jumped off? Illegal procedure. Five yards. Offense. Routine third down. Well, the third down receiver has been number 91, Luke Fisher. In the past, they've been able to go to him. Clayton Driver has come in at the split end, replacing Hunter Gallimore. And he is to the right, at the top of your screen, along with Johnson. Blitz up the middle, it's Haynes. Pass is put up for the end zone for Driver, incomplete. Savage was the closest man to it for NC State. Interesting strategy by Billy Lewis and his offensive staff. Steve Logan, the offensive coordinator, they felt the blitz was coming. They were right. They kept the tight end in, Luke Fisher to block, and they had a one receiver route. And that's what they were trying to hit. They had it against man coverage. They had exactly what they wanted. Just good coverage by North Carolina State. So it stops the clock with 6.29 remaining third quarter. This will be a 46-yard field goal attempt by Anthony Brenner. Got the distance, but new off to the right. Two key words here, missed opportunities. Twice on turnovers by NC State. East Carolina has failed to score points. Looked like he got underneath it just a little bit and popped it up and didn't get enough of the drive into it. Anthony Brenner, number 13. Just like when you try to... Let's go down to uh, Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Well, Ron, with the ECU defense just coming back in, they've suffered a key injury to linebacker Ken Burnett. Jerry, we can actually see on the uh, x-ray here where exactly the break is. Now, how do you treat this? 
He has a fracture of the mid shaft of the radius, the large bone here in the forearm. You see in the lateral view, there's some overlapping of the bone fragments. He also has some rotation here. Now they're going to cast him here. What will probably happen, they'll take him back to Greenville, North Carolina tomorrow and probably take him in the operating room surgery and put a plate right here, maybe about six or seven screws in to hold this together. It should heal nicely, but he's going to be out for about eight weeks. All right, Jerry, thank you. Well, Ron, now really the responsibility for this defense falls in the arms of Tony Davis, Ken Burnett's replacement. Ken Burnett, a senior from Spruce Pine, North Carolina. We wish him well. That, by the way, that catch by Davenport, only his second of the game. He has two for 15, and he ran into his own man, Scott Adell. Otherwise, he might have had a lot bigger game. Jordan zips this one incomplete. Robert Hinton, who caught that uh, swing pass for a touchdown earlier in the third quarter, was the man he wanted. Just ran out of room. They had a corner route on, and he just ran out of room, Anthony. The Robert Hinton, number 10 from J Terry Jordan. Look for him on third down here. Trying to, maybe trying to run the football again. They, they're, trying to, they're getting away from the running game a little bit too early. They've had success in the first quarter. Credit East Carolina in the second quarter for shutting down. North Carolina State 5 of 10 on third down conversions today. They need the ball all the way out to the 39. He's got it. Davenport. Greg Grandison has to make the stop, but there's the man that Mike Gottfried was talking about that they have got to unleash. Got to get the ball to Charles Davenport. Number seven. Watch him with just a little bit of an in route. You see the cushion he gets. Defender fell down, makes the catch for the first down across the 45-yard line. Greg Floyd, number 34, was a defensive back that fell down, came up with the play. Now get back to the running game on first down. Well, he's got those first two in there, Vayner and Barber who they like to run with, and he goes with Maynard, the fullback. You can see Robert Jones, one of the first men, number 44, to rock his head back and send him in the opposite direction, just shy of the 50. And he's sending a 240-pound fullback back the other way. Robert Jones is a player, and it seems like he's played here forever. I coached a pit <laughs> against him, and uh, Greg Gardell from Johnstown, PA, the defensive tackle, number 59, was also in, the, in on the play. But Robert Jones, a very active linebacker, reminds me of Quentin Coria from Texas A&M. Barber, hold as he gets stuck at the line of scrimmage, a gain of one, but he had to pay for it. Freddie Walker came up and was assisting after he'd been hit around the ankles, and the first man was Gardell, who did hit him low, and then Walker came up and finished him off. East Carolina's defensive strategy now has become very simple. They're blitzing on first and second down and trying to force NC State out of running the football on first and second down. So they're going to have to throw on, on first down a little bit more and try to open their game, run the ball on third down. But East Carolina's doing a nice job of trying to pressure this NC State offense right now. Second or sixth play of the drive. You see the blitz coming past to Davenport and look out. Oh, boy. Greg Floyd barely grabbed him at the ankle as he had made an outside move on him. That's the trade-off. If you're going to blitz somebody, then you're going to be in loose man coverage. Watch the blitz come here. They, they're just doing a lot of blitzing right now. Three-step drop by Terry Jordan. Hits Charles Davenport on just a quick look-in route. And now number 34, Greg Floyd has to make the tackle. So you have it's whatever poison you want to decide right now. You try to stop the run, you try to stop the pass, but you got to guess right. NC State has already had more third and longs in the third quarter than they have in the entire first half, though. You're right, they have. They try to counter the option. He does. Breaks off the tackle, and it'll be first and goal at the nine-yard line. And when they looked at the video again, whoever the player was who hit him at the line of scrimmage didn't lock up. He had him for a loss. I don't think, Ron, I, I think you're right, but I'm not sure he even saw it. He's going to turn, and then he's going to come down the line. He's going to turn, come down the line right here. The defensive player comes in and makes contact, but I'm not so sure he even knew he had the football. Let's watch. Good block. That was a good block by the tight end. And then he's able to get up inside for good yardage. Good block by the tight end, Todd Harrison, number 84. Eighteen yards on that sprint for the quarterback, Jordan. Downs at the one. 
Now look for the jet over the top. The ball to go to the tailback and the leap over the top right here. From second down. That's number 45 over the top. Okay, the big fullback. Greg Maynard, touchdown for North Carolina State. Good job by the offensive line of North Carolina State. Open it up for Greg Maynard. They took Garrett Downs, the tailback in motion, brought a linebacker out of the inside and just sent the big fullback, Greg Maynard, in the line for the touchdown. So, interestingly enough, that would have made it an 11-point game, and now we're, we're back on track. It's think, a 10-point game. I think Robert Jones may have got that. Somebody got it up inside because there wasn't a lot of arc on that football. So we go to break. 27-17. to 17, It's the Wolfpack on top. And for those thousands you spend on uh, them attempting to matriculate, it makes you understand that this, they are getting the kind of education that makes them take off their shirt on a 36-degree day. Well, Robert Jones, let's watch number 44 right here. He's going to leap up along with Jerry Dillon, but he gets it with Robert Jones, number 44, gets it with his left hand. And you like to block college kicks up inside because they've taken away the tee. And they don't get the height right off the ball that you need to get sometimes. And they were able to get up there. Robert Jones has controlled this football game. He has played a great game for East Carolina. And for sure he has. 12 tackles, one interception, and one block point after. Ten-point game. It is incumbent upon his offense to get something going. Down 27 to 17. Johnson from two yards deep. Just like that, at the 47-yard line. They're going to say it's a 49-yard return. William Strong saved what could have been six. East Carolina did as fine a job of blocking that kickoff return as you're ever going to see. Watch the blocking set up. It's a left return. Why? There's a block. There's the second block. Missed tackle. Now the blocking going downfield. Good job saving the saving the touchdown by forcing him into the sideline. Van Buren going to be knocked down for a loss in its hands. Billy Ray Haynes has had an equally outstanding day on the North Carolina State side of the ball. I, I agree totally. He's done the same thing as Robert Jones done on the other side of the field. First down, East Carolina may be running the outside uh, stretch play. Uh, in getting into a pattern because NC State really looked like they played that one pretty well. Lofted the pass, caught by Luke Fisher. And he is inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Seventeen yards in the play. Van Buren will take it to the right side for three, maybe four yards. Cedric, a junior out of Charleston, South Carolina. Doesn't have great speed, but he's very durable, very dependable back. They like their extra back to sometimes be a receiver, and uh, they haven't had the yardage in the rushing game that they'd like to have this year. Uh, they, they haven't run the option much in this ball game at all. 11 carries, 65 yards for Van Buren. Draw play. Daniels hit at the line of scrimmage 
and he is going to lose a yard in the play and guess who Billy Ray Haynes Billy Ray Haynes saw the blocking pattern of the offensive line watch number 50 the linebacker he sees it's a draw watching break up make the tackle the, the offensive right tackle couldn't block him because he read it so soon and he was up inside there's just no way to block him on that play 510 Billy Ray Haynes third down they need the ball inside the 29 got a man oh my goodness Gallimore dropped it had him cutting toward the sideline and he had beaten his man and I tell you what the guy who just looked over at the bench and went whoa is Dwayne Washington because he had turned him loose I think they have to go for this on fourth down here I think Jeff Blake needs to stay on the field they need to try to pick this first down up watch Hunter Gallimore number 82 here's the clear out there you see him come underneath the linebackers drop so deep there you see Billy Ray Haynes trying to get to him but he can't stay with him just drop the football I'd come back with something similar to that because of the drop of the backers. Now this is going to be an interesting call, Ron. The line was still, they had not gone to a three-point. And I think, well, let's wait. I think this, what do you think? I think it's going to be on the defense because of the contact. Because he was just moving just to That's set. Right. Yeah, he was moving to set. They have not gone to the three-point. I think they've got a real discussion here because I, <laughs> as I watch this, I'm not sure how you'd call this one. Red ball. Ball start. Offense. Fourth down. I don't know about that call now. Gonna see the replay here. Let's see. See what the official saw. Yes, left guard yep. moved. Yep, good call. Hey, what an officials group. The big eight group. We've got a big eight group in here today. Good John job. John Laurie is the referee, and it's an excellent call. Yeah, we didn't see him move inside, but that is uh, that's certainly against the offense. Good high pooch kick this time. Turner back deep, and he's gonna try to catch it. Why? Inside the five-yard line. Good heavens. Yep, you have a 10-yard rule all the time where you tell your players don't ever catch anything inside the 10-yard line. Well, you thought this was the last college football game at ESPN this season? Well, think again. All-star season begins on January the 11th with the Japan Bowl from Yokohama. BYU's Ty Detmer leads the nation's best senior talent when West meets East next Saturday, 10 o'clock Eastern time. I made that trip last year. Very interesting. Yokohama. They enjoy the football over there. They have any spaghetti or Italian? No, food? they didn't have any spaghetti. They had a lot of pom poms, though. It's probably going to be the final play of this third quarter. Yep, it will be. So we go to the final 15. Let's take a break. It is North Carolina State 27 and East Carolina 17. Well, Dick Sheridan and his staff knowing that they uh, have got a 10-point lead, but against the offense of East Carolina, what they better do is they better have some more sustained drives and take time off the clock because they're very explosive. They need a big drive right here. They've got poor field position. Barber, and he's going to be whacked down hard at the line, and now here comes in a late flag. Tony Davis made the stop. Tony is the man, of course, replacing Ken Burdett. We saw the, the guys down on the sideline. They're just going to be holding against the Wolfpack. And they're showing the, the x-rays of his uh, broken leg. Came from the broken side. arm, I beg your pardon. Yeah. This, this penalty came from the side judge, so it probably was on the tight end. It came deep in, uh, in the uh, backfield Kobe. of East Carolina. Offense. The penalties declined. Third down. An interesting call, declining that penalty, but now they put the there he is right there. That Kim, Kim Burdett, I've already got that thing uh, in a cast, and his uh, Dr. Jerry Punch said to put some pins in it tomorrow. Okay, third down. Here we go. They need the 15 yard line. Mark 
Washington comes across to knock down Barber on a huge defensive play. Well, and went, now the Pirates should get good field position. They went to a 4-3 scheme and brought the linebackers. Mark Washington, number 99, get penetration on Barber. He never had a chance to cut that. So a good call by Billy Lewis to turn down the penalty. Now he's forced him into a fourth down situation. They're going to have great field position. They should try to block the punt again. Ball for an average of just over 36. His longest is uh, 50. And again, a high passer coming after him, and they didn't plane out. I think they could have blocked it. Johnson, meanwhile, fumbles it, and North Carolina State has recovered at the 48. Oh, NC State, or East Carolina with a mistake at both ends of the play. You're, you're totally right. As special teams again. I said it at the beginning. They're still trying to argue who's got the football. They gave a signal for North Carolina State, and they're giving it again. But you're right, Ron. They had a chance to block the kick. They just didn't extend the arms to try to take it off the foot of the kicker. And then on the other end, Deion Johnson fumbled the return. And I said all along in this bowl season, the kicking game has played such a big part because of the layoff that coaches have. They haven't got the time and uh, to, to work with the players because you take the breaks. Here's the possible block. See, See he's got his hand straight up. He's got to take do it off go the parallel to the ground. No, you're right. He's a special team. He's got to take the ball off his foot. Then on the other side, you have the dropped ball, and North Carolina State picks it up. Well, it was a mistake of about 45 yards. Has dropped for a loss. Derek Taylor comes across and hits Jordan. So the defense doing their job. But the special teams right there cost them. We'll see how dearly it does cost them. I'll tell you what, this game reminds me of a boxing match where you got East Carolina on the ropes and just about ready to go out, but North Carolina State can't knock them out. <laughs> it's like George Foreman in, uh, against Evander Holifield. He stays in there, and, and the longer they stay in there with that potent offense, they can get back in this game with a quick strike. No, you're this, right. It's a key drive for NC State to try to, to put them away. <laughs> Trick play here. That's a lateral. He can throw it. He has to dodge the pigeon, then gets the pass away. And Davenport will make the catch and score. blocked a moment ago and knocks this one through let's go back and look at the trick play as the the lateral went back behind Terry Jordan and as we said you know you can only throw one pass in a play but that's a lateral so this one sets it up Liddell George when you get to the 50 yard line that's where you want to try your trick plays and what happened here is Liddell George threw the high fly to Charles Davenport but Fred Walker, number 22. You're going to watch Davenport come down inside. He's the big play receiver on this. There's two receivers. Now the ball's going to be thrown up. Watch number 22. Fred Walker just loses the football and can't come around and find it. He spun around, and Charles Davenport had his eyes on that ball all the time and made the reception. So all of a sudden, it is a 17-point game, and three plays ago, East Carolina should be looking at, at the worst. A safety in their behalf and getting the ball back, if not a touchdown on the block kick, and all of a sudden they've been scored on, and they're down almost to the point of too much hill to climb. They're not out yet, but I'll tell you, that was a blow right there to the head, and uh, you just had to figure eventually Davenport, being the big play guy, was going to make some kind of big play. Now, East Carolina still has 13.01 on the clock with Jeff Blake. They still need to just take their time and be patient, try to work their way back in the game not come back firing and try to throw deep and, and get an interception picked off against them. North Carolina State's strategy now will be to loosen up a little bit and give you the five and seven yard catches. And 
make you work the clock. Foul with the kick. Wind is going to hold this one up. And in fact, a fair catch was signaled for at the 15-yard line by David Daniels. Tim Brando, what do you have for us? Ron, you and Mike have been talking about the kicking game and practicing it. Watch Brian Treggs on the return and look at the wall of blockers set up. The final block thrown by number one, Daryl Brown, right there. King Brian Treggs, 72 yards. Clemson is not trailed by 17 all year. They're down by that many with 2.51 remaining in the first at the Florida Citrus Bowl. Tim, when you have those big layoffs and coaching and work and timing and everything, the kicking game is the one area that really in bowl games can stand out. And boy, this bowl season has been a big standout. Blake over the middle wanted Luke Fisher, and there's nothing there. And now to just to reinforce what Mike was talking about, the linebackers, there was a wall set about seven yards off the ball, and the defensive backs looked like they were an outfield in baseball. The Atlanta Braves outfield. They were, they were deep back against the wall. They're going to make them work now. They work the field. Try not to give them the big strike that they gave to Hunter Galmore early in the game. 12 minutes and 56 seconds left to play in this one. East Carolina led it at halftime, but in the second half, it has been all the red and white of the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Over the middle, complete to driver this time. To the 31, Billy Ray Haynes makes a stop. And that will move the chains for the Pirates. That's exactly what North Carolina State's plan is. They'll probably mix in some blitzes and play some zone coverage behind it and make this East Carolina team work the field. Quick out pass this time to Gallimore. Around the 40 yard line of Sebastian Savage. And Dr. Jerry Punch, what do you have for us? Guys, you know how tough it is to win a national championship. NC State did it twice in basketball. 74 with Norm Sloan, 83 with Jim Valvano. But the cheerleaders behind me have done it three times in the past five years. They are the national champion cheerleaders of all Division I. And they certainly have the emotion pulsating here on the Wolfpack sideline. Back upstairs. Blake taps one time and then he's going to go up on top. And it is intercepted at the five yard line by Mike Reed. East Carolina tried to get the bundle on that play. Mike Reed, number three, was in pretty good position. Looks like a little bumping again on number 85, Clayton Driver. Ball was thrown a long way, intercepted by Mike Reed. Reed, nine tackles and one interception in the ball game. Not very good field position for NC State, but they simply couldn't care less. They just want to take some minutes off the clock. And I think this is not the first time we'll see Maynard hammer with the football. Well, that graphic that we just saw on the screen, four turnovers for East Carolina in this game. And two turnovers for North Carolina State. But let's go back. The two turnovers that North Carolina State had, East Carolina did not turn into points. So missed opportunities. And I talked earlier around about how sometimes the adrenaline flows so quick and, and you push so hard in the first half and preparing for a ball. I think NC State has a little bit more in reserve right now in the second half. Maynard again. He will take it about a yard shy of the first down. I'll tell you what. If you guys can get a shot, that pigeon is still about two yards off the line of scrimmage, and he's not moving for anything, is he? <laughs> can you see what the officials now walking up to him, trying to get him to, to get up and uh, and fly, and uh, and he's just going away at that. Some kind of seed that's on the ground. I'll tell you one thing, that seed's more important than his life because he's about ready to get stepped on. <laughs> that's an eating pigeon there, boy. Put an ISO on that pigeon. Maynard hammers it up the middle. 
And Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us here in this fourth quarter? Well, Ron, I'm afraid, unlike what Jerry Punch found across the field on the other sideline, cheerleading is the last thing you will find here. The one thing that Coach Lewis was bothered by earlier in the week, he said, North Carolina State has been to four straight bowls. We haven't been to a single one. They've been down by a couple of touchdown nationally ranked teams, but with about uh, 10 minutes left to go in this game, I'm afraid midnight may have struck for Cinderella. Well, there's something about a bowl experience. North Carolina State has it. East Carolina will be back in bows. I'll guarantee you that. Now that running play will come out near the 25. <laughs> this is amazing. That bird has not moved. He's still right there at the 18-yard line. In fact, officially on stats, we've just been given to East Carolina 49 yards passing in the second half. Pigeon 85. Well, I don't know what the pigeon's passing, but he's he's, he's still there. 34-17, about to go under 10 minutes to play in this one. Pitch to Barber. He will be hit as he tries to turn the corner. Mark Washington and Robert Jones combining in the stop, and a late flag has come down at the line of scrimmage. Folks, there's what we're talking about. That pigeon right there has not moved. They've scrimmaged around him. They've just missed him a couple times, and there's just some things more important in life, and then I guess it's food. Those seeds that they put down there, that pigeon is not going to leave till he has every seed. Look at it. Holding. Offense. The penalties decline. Third down. Well, the official walked up to him a bit ago and started to kick at him and then thought better of it, and I'm sure because it'd be some kind of activist watching or in the stadium who would come and protest. I tell you, I'd like to have that pigeon on my team because he's not afraid of anything. Players miss him. It's almost like the players are trying to avoid him, too. Don't bother him while he's eating. Well, they run away from him. They go right up the middle, maybe a yard of the play. And we've just been handed the attendance 59,322. It's a Peach Bowl record. The previous record, 1987. Uh, Tennessee and Indiana had uh, just over 58,000. Change at 59,322 and a hungry pigeon. <laughs> Tim Kilpatrick when you look at the box score you will look and see uh, that he punted and punted well but he has been an integral part and has done an extremely good job in the special teams for North Carolina State Deion Johnson is back in a single safety off the side of his foot and just as soon as he gets bragged on that punt will be at around the 30-yard line. We'll be right back. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Peach Bowl is brought to you by Delta Airlines. We love to fly, and it shows. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats us. Now part of the record crowd on hand for this 1992 edition of the Peach Bowl, the 24th edition. Next year will be indoors. It'll be in prime time on January the 2nd. We played it at the Georgia Dome. Lakes pass complete underneath. Johnson's going to be wrapped up as he goes to the 23-yard 20, line. Now Texas A&M and Florida State, 7-2. Seminoles leading that one with a minute left. Syracuse at halftime over Ohio State. And I'll tell you, 70 to nothing. California leading Clemson with Clemson's offense. That's almost too much of a hill to climb for them. California has good defense. Pass is complete and out of bounds at the 15-yard line is Van Buren. That punt of 10 yards really has given great field position to East Carolina. Second half, here you see the possessions. Punt, this field goal, punt, and interception. They've got to cash this one in to get back in this football game.
Lifts up the middle, pass incomplete. Gallimore is who he wanted. Billy Ray Haynes was streaking up the middle, and the senior out of Forest City, North Carolina, had a pretty good look on Blake just as he delivered it. 18 of 33, two interceptions, 247 yards, and two touchdowns. Those are the numbers on Blake. East Carolina's been able to come back this year on several occasions. Syracuse game, there's a lot of time left, eight minutes in this game. For the far side, caught by Fisher. First and goal for East Carolina. Boy, nice route by Luke Fisher. He ran a corner route, but what was more impressive was the fact that the way he reached out and put his uh, hands on this football. Watch the corner route. Now breaks away from number 32 on defense. But watch the catch here. Reaches up, brings the ball back in. Sebastian Savage, number 32 on coverage. It's seven catches for Fisher for 94 yards. He is a, a good receiver, and Jeff Blake likes to go to him. Fade route incomplete. Van Buren's the man he wanted. They had success on their touchdown that they scored early the first touchdown on a play action pass down here. They tried to run the option. You remember the second time down and get thrown for a loss. You want to put Jeff Blake in some kind of position where he's running outside with the ball with a pass run combination. Pass overthrown. Fisher is the man he wanted. Well, they really have shown disdain for the run down here, haven't they? Well, it goes back to, again, they haven't had a good running game all year. The running game's off the option, and they like to put Deion Johnson in the backfield. Their whole belief is they want the ball in Jeff Blake's hands, and they want him throwing the football. But uh, so much, when you get down here, some of the times the biggest question mark you have to have is whether they're going to play a coverage of zone or man because you don't have a lot of field to work with down here. That's why I like rolling him out. If I'm going to roll him, I want to roll him out. Option play, did he get in? Yes, touchdown, Jeff Blake. Tough to defend in the goal line. That's the option that they ran. They came back and ran a different option. Steve Logan, good call, the offensive coordinator. Ran the option to the left, and uh, the pitch man, Junior uh, Charles Miles, was taken, and uh, Jeff Blake just ran it in for the score. Then another option quarterback passing quarterback for Jeff Blake the name Travis Hunter in 1988 and 89 it was very effective as a quarterback for East Carolina kick by Brenner is good and let's as we go to break take one more look at that touchdown by Jeff Blake I think the crowd's booing because they didn't think he got in the end zone let's see Looks like a good call. I don't think his knee was on the ground. So let's take a commercial. Ten point lead by the Wolfpack. 726 left in this one. Ten point game at North Carolina State. And Mike, is it too early for an onside kick? No, I think if you're North Carolina State, you've got to figure they may onside kick here. You're down 10 with 726 in the clock. You got that option, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if they onside kick it. Boots it away. It's going to be Lawrence from the 13. Hang on. Lawrence all the way out to the 46-yard line. And right now, the East Carolina staff is saying, heck, if we would onside kicker, we wouldn't give it up much more field position than that. Well, you know, you got to take, take some chances. But East Carolina is a team that's come back all year. They're not out of this ball game. There you see what they did against Syracuse. They came back. And they were down 20-10 in that one. He came back. 123 to 20 against a very good Syracuse team. Pittsburgh, 24-23. So they uh, they are capable, with their offense, and your point is well taken, they're not out of it, and particularly with just about seven and a half minutes left. And that's exactly what Dick Sheridan had wanted either, and that is to run out of bounds and stop the clock. 
No, and they're running inside to the in the short side again because of the strong safety and the coverage that East Carolina's given. They they've got the extra man there into the boundary, so look for them to stay into the boundary. Well, that's been their motto all year. They have a lot of faith that uh, they can make it happen. You know, they've just had a great coaching job, Billy Lewis. Uh, he talked about after the Syracuse game, looking at the players and faces after the game when they had lost, and he said, I knew then I had a special bunch because it meant something to them and that they were just anxious to come back and play again and win. And they've had a great year. I don't care what happens here. Draw play. Barber will be wrapped up as he crosses midfield by Tony Davis. You know, just just imagine what they've accomplished, though. Haven't been to a bowl game for a long period of time. They've had good coaches. Mike McGee has coached East Carolina. Ed Emery, uh, Art Baker, Pat Dye did a, did a good job there. But Billy Lewis took this team, and after the fourth game, they were ranked 39th in the country. They only had four points in the AP poll, and they've come all the way to 12. East Carolina. Short drop and a quick out pass incomplete. And he goings, or oh, what happened? He just kind of looked around as though he heard somebody coming. He should have caught that one. Watch the throw by Terry Jordan, and again you see the receiver just take his eye off the ball. Well, they need well let's a good see if Kilpat now. yeah, Kilpatrick with a 10-yard kick his last time as you look at Johnson. Johnson uh, had a no-no. That was costly. He fumbled a punt here in the second half. Johnson will let it go, and it will go into the end zone, just barely. Dr. Jerry Punch, let's get an update from him. Jerry. Gentlemen, the signature for the Wolfpack the past three years has been defense, ranked in the top ten in the nation, and two of the guys standing inside me, the little guys here, were primary reasons. Mike Jones, of that bowl-winning team of a year ago, now playing defensive tackle for the Phoenix Cardinals, and All-American and first-round draft choice, Ray Agnew, with the Patriots. And, Ray, you guys are really turning around. Coach Mack doing a great job. Yeah, Coach Mack is a great coach. We're glad to have him. He brought the farm back to New England. I hope he stays there as long as I'm there. A couple of players that NC State would like to have on defense right now as they try to hold on these last six and a half minutes back up there. Thanks, Jerry. Continued success to both of them. Ten-point game. East Carolina looking to try to come up with something. And Gallimore makes a reception, and he really takes a blow. I think that's a long pass. It's a very hard pass to throw. And Blake just doesn't. He doesn't even wince. He just zips it out there. He has so much confidence in his throwing ability and his accuracy and the velocity that he puts on the ball. Just a very confident quarterback. Over the middle. This time it's Van Buren, and he will be down at the 34-yard line. Good for the first down, so it looks as though exclusively from the shotgun formation is how East Carolina will run this final six minutes and nine seconds. And uh, with their offense, as we mentioned, I don't think you can ever count them out. No, and they've got good receivers. If you're North Carolina State, oh, you want to make sure you wrap up and you tackle. You don't want to miss tackles now because you're going to give them a short route. Don't miss tackles. Well, one guy who just hadn't dropped them today, but he did there is Luke Fisher. He already had seven catches for 94 yards, and that one he lost concentration on and dropped. They're a score away and an onside kick away from taking the lead in this ball game because uh, they're very capable as we talked at the start of the show, the big plays that they've had through the year. Billy Lewis, just a great job coaching this year. On second down, a pass his man at the 50 Clayton driver. And down to the NC State 45-yard line. See, there was a missed tackle there on Clayton Driver, and he picked up an extra five yards. Now they go with the no huddle. They continue to go with the no huddle. You see the slow snap. Watch the crossing route underneath. That gets the linebackers up, and that's what opens it up for number 85, Clayton Driver. Then the missed tackle, five more yards. Pass 
pass is complete and it will be down to the 37 yard line and you could hear the groan by the crowd and what I think it was the NC State crowd the tackle of the guard on the right side and I couldn't pick up who it was because I had to stay with the quarterback Blake just tackled the defensive lineman as he came across looked like a holding call wasn't called and I think then people were expecting Jeff Blake to run the football and pick up some yardage but he wants to throw the football that will be enough for the first down, I believe, if they give him a spot at the 35, and they do. You're seeing a team that believes in the two-minute offense. As I said earlier, you work. I, I watched them work it. I watched both teams. So North Carolina State has worked this very part of the game also. They know what to expect. Now it becomes just a group that's going to execute the better. Well, you can see from the spotting they did not pick it up. Keeps the clock moving also. Now he got out of bounds. So yeah. it's still 5 0 get out of bounds. We had trouble. There are so many kids in the sidelines right there that it obscured our vision. We're in four down territory anyway. And I'm surprised. I guess he wanted to make sure that he went ahead and picked it up. But I'm a little surprised that they, they did that to take time off the clock. Well, they know the clock will stop now and they'll have a chance now to get back. Clock still hasn't started. Now it starts. Pass is complete, and that is good for nine yards. It's Fisher, his eighth grab of the day. Now, for people sitting at home saying, what is NC State doing? What they're doing is they're cushioning, as Mike said, with the linebackers, and that's the void zone. If they bring them up, then you hit them deeper, right in between them and the safety. You see them hit Hunter Gallimore behind the linebackers. If they cut, cover Hunter Gallimore, they go underneath just like they are here. Fisher with the catch. It'll be an East Carolina first down inside the 20-yard line. Tyler Lawrence is there defensively. The other thing I want to get you to comment on is the fact that this shotgun formation is a couple of yards deeper than what most people use. He is deep, and because he has such a strong arm, he can back him up a little bit further, and they're not getting much of a rush, so they're only running, rushing three people on him. But now, where the problem has come from East Carolina is once they've gotten inside the 15-yard line and running out of room, now see, see if they can solve that on this series. Big pressure this time, and he just throws it away. NC State decided to get a blitz on him to try to get a little bit more pressure and try to get him to hurry. And you know, now the discussion goes on. He had no time to look at it, but NC State had messed up their coverage. Fisher had broken open at the five-yard line, and that's the reason the defensive backs are having their little powwow down there in the secondary. Man coverage, had a crossing route. Somebody lost a man, that's why it was open. But Jeff Blake just didn't have time to get rid of the football. Good time for him to have that kind of pressure, huh? Good call defensively. Johnson over the middle. At the five, he'll score. Now then, I think you go for two here. I think you do. I think you consider going for two here to put yourself in this chance for a field goal to win the game. Yep, and that's what they're going to do. And they like the option on the uh, on the two-point play. They ran it earlier against Pitt in the year, but it doesn't look like a formation for the option. And now a timeout is called. So they burn one of the three. Let's take it with them. 34 to 30. Well, here's the situation. NC State 34 to 30. And East Carolina lined up to go for two and to put them in a position to win with a field goal should they be good on the two-point conversion. But they call the timeout. Now they're in more of a formation to run the option. I'm not sure that's what they'll call it this time. But remember the two-point play against Pitt was an option play. Ball is dropped, and Blake can only go down to make the recovery. So the situation is now. you got to score a touchdown, get the football back, and score a touchdown if they're going to win this 24th Peach Bowl game. 
And we talked about what North Carolina State had to do on defense. They're playing a lot of zone coverage. And you have to break on the ball. Here they brought a linebacker late on Jeff Blake. But watch the missed tackles. That's what you can't afford. There's one. There's two. And that's what causes the touchdown. You have to keep people in front of you in zone coverage. Make the tackle. Do not miss the tackles in that situation. All right, now Dick Sheridan understands this situation better than anybody. They can't have a one, two, three and out. They've got to pick up at least one first down because East Carolina's last two scoring drives, seven plays, 32 yards, one minute and 15 seconds. The other 11 plays, 80 yards, two minutes and six seconds, so they can score in a very short period of time. Well, now that really the strategy comes right here for Billy Lewis, the onside kick here or not I think now you kick the ball deep before I felt like you should have the long the onside kick now I'll kick the ball deep I have two timeouts count on my defense to hold them try to get myself field position where I come back and win it at the buzzer Lawrence and Barber the two deep men Gunner's kick Going to come down to Lawrence. The fate of the 1986 Peach Bowl rested on the shoulders of Virginia Tech kicker Chris Kinzel. With North Carolina State leading 24 to 22, Kinzel booted a 40 yard field goal. This on the final play of the game. And Virginia Tech got its first ever bowl victory. Well, we mentioned to you that there have been some fantastic finishes. They try the reverse, and Davenport is going to be dropped for a nine-yard loss by Jerry Dillon. Wow. Tough call right here, and a great play by East Carolina. Here you see the reverse with Jerry Dillon, who's responsible for the reverse, broke up and made the play on number seven, Charles Davenport. And still, East Carolina has two timeouts remaining. Running play will pick up eight of the nine that they lost just a moment ago. Downs will be stopped by Robert Jones. And now third down. East Carolina looking to the bench. Still no signal for a timeout to stop the clock. As we show 3-13, now 3-12. Left in the ball game. I think they have to throw the football here to try to pick this first down up. You can't play passing now because you've got a third and 11 situation. Even if it's an incomplete pass, he stops the clock. You've got to try to pick this first down up. Because East Carolina is too hot to give him the football. Quick out is dropped. I think you throw the football, but you got to throw it a little farther down the field to try to pick up the first down. But uh, that's twice that play's been dropped. Now the pressure goes to the punter. Tom Kilpatrick, number 37, because East Carolina's been close on him a couple times, a block and kicks. Yeah, they really have. This may be the time that East Carolina wants to set up a return and try to get Deion Johnson in the ball game. They came after him, lazy spiral. Johnson will get a chance to return. Will he ever? Johnson inside the 45 and he's down at the 42. Deion Johnson, you want the ball in his hands. He's your best running back. He avoids the tackle, bursts up inside, now picks up great yardage to the 42-yard line and puts his team in a great chance to win this football game. Now North Carolina State's defense has to play a little different right now. Flags down all over the place. Pass is complete to Fisher. That should be on the offensive tackle of East Carolina. It looked like he moved just a little bit early.
And right now, the bench, this is a rare situation, but the players are asking the East Carolina fans to be a little quieter because they thought that maybe they couldn't hear the cadence. Disregard the flag. The defensive team moved into the neutral zone. The offense was in a two-point stance and moved. No play, no foul. Replay the down. I think East Carolina got away with one there, which is uh, very fortunate for them. Mike, I didn't look up. Did was was any time did it come off the uh, off the clock because they didn't put any back up there? That would be a very important point, also. Okay, they just put five seconds back on the clock to answer that question. Over the middle, it's Johnson again. And he will be stopped at the 34-yard line by Tyler Lawrence. Watch the left side of your screen. Here's the play though, just before where the tackle moved. You see the right tackle? He moved, and then they didn't get the call. Terry Tillman, number 78. Pass over the middle again. It is complete. Ball is loose. Recovered by East Carolina at the 30-yard line. And it's Van Buren who got on it. Good heavens. So if you had just joined us, two minutes left in the ball game. It is North Carolina State 34, East Carolina 30, and the Pirates are driving with a first down at the Wolfpack 30. Luke Fisher's been the man on the spot. He's caught the big pass plays for ball possession. Deep over the middle, incomplete. And he was off his target on that, where driver is who he wanted. What if you're East Carolina, you look for right now, you're throwing all the short routes and you're doing all the right things. Eventually, it may get one of those defensive backs to bite and be able to get the post behind them. But right now, their strategy is clear to try to keep hitting the open receiver over the middle. Hope NC State misses a tackle or two, and you keep driving down there toward that end zone. Blake sets very deep, drills his pass, has it complete, and out of bounds is Luke Fisher. And I'll tell you, Blake has now gone with a new career high, and we'll double-check it in just a moment. That's going to put him over 350 yards, Mike, for the day. 30 of 51 for 356. Well, he has had a, a very impressive day. This is a big third down situation for East Carolina. One forty left in the ball game. Pass is caught. Fisher will score. Frankie Valley is starting to hum a little bit there, wherever he's starting to hum, I believe, right now. Pumped a little life back in, uh, in him. I think you're right. <laughs> Good heavens. What a comeback. 132 left in the game, and East Carolina trying to make it a three point lead. He's got it. North Carolina State, just a moment ago. Led by 17 points. I believe has been their theme all year. And right now, I believe it is beginning to work again. Watch Luke Fisher, and again, a missed tackles. He comes down, just runs a little curl route. Good break by Reed on the ball. Just couldn't come up with the completion, the incompletion, and couldn't come up with the tackle. Jeff Blake, a happy, happy quarterback. So, if you have just joined us, to mention again, East Carolina, what at the beginning of this quarter was down 17 points, 
And right now it is 132 to play. East Carolina 37. North Carolina State 34. Can't count them out. You can't ever count them out. But I'll tell you, you can't count NC State out either. They've had a big key on this will be what kind of return they get on the kickoff. Now you start to look at the field goal kicker for North Carolina State because the pressure may fall on his shoulders if they can get in his range. Kick is going to come down to Lawrence from the four. Lawrence has been very tough, and he is again. He'll take it out close to the 30-yard line. So now we have 127 left in the ball game. Blake with four touchdown passes. That is a new Peach Bowl record. The old record was three, held by five different individuals. Jordan on first down over the middle has it complete but it'll only go for about three yards as Davis comes up to make the tackle on Chris Williams and of course North Carolina State the near hurry up will not have a huddle you got to keep an eye on Davenport because he's the guy that can break it open they've got three timeouts left they've got time pass caught by Chris Williams and I don't believe he's going to have the first down. Nope, not from where they have spotted him down. They're going to stop the clock maybe to measure here, which will be a benefit for NC State. Yep, it sure will. As you can see, under a minute to play in this one. Now they want the clock back, and NC State's not ready to go. I don't think they know it's the clock's moving. Jordan's pass is caught by Williams. Did he catch it in bounds? Yes. Just across midfield at the 48. 14 yards, most importantly, a first down, and he stops the clock. Thirty-seven seconds, three timeouts. Jordan deep over the middle incomplete to start thinking about the field goal that you need Damon Hartman number 13 has kicked a 56 yard field goal he'd like to have the opportunity here this ball club can get him closer 37 to 34 East Carolina 32 ticks left on that clock Jordan's pass is caught by Davenport, and I'll tell you, he's one man from going the distance. He was close. I'll tell you, there was movement in the North Carolina State offensive line that time. They got away with one that time. Greg Floyd tripped him up. So there's a timeout on the field. 37 to 34, the Pirates will be right back. So there's the situation. 26 seconds left. 37 to 34 East Carolina only one tie ever in the Peach Bowl 74 Vanderbilt and Texas Tech finished deadlocked at six apiece Jordan heavy pressure and he will go down Kumalai loss of 17 Oh, he knows he made a mistake too, Terry Jordan, because he just had to try to throw the ball away, not take that sack and take himself out of any kind of field goal range. Watch Terry Jordan set up the throw. He's got to be smart. He's got to feel the rush. Now he's got to get rid of the ball. He doesn't get the opportunity because of the pressure of Zion Kumalai, number 50, and Derek Taylor, number 97. A big sack by number 50, Kumalai. 
Tumalai wears number 50 because he has tried to pattern his playing style after Chris Zorich, who wore the number 50 for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Dick Sheridan has to be a tad in disbelief as you look at the partisans from East Carolina because just at the beginning of this quarter, his football team led by 17 points who we were talking about was it too much of a hill to climb? And you said at that time, Mike, with this offense, absolutely not. They're a big play offense. They're always in every ball game. They're, as I said, like a basketball team that shoots three-point plays all the time. They're constantly firing, trying to score. Well, the next sequence, one or two plays, which is about all North Carolina State has time left for, certainly could be the biggest play or two in East Carolina football history. Zings it over the middle, has it complete, and Hinton at the 30-yard line, and they're going to stop the clock with six seconds left. Mike, this is very attainable here because this would be a 47-yard field goal attempt. It is within the range of Hartman. Boy, good pass there. There's a lot of time wasted at the end, but uh, watch the throw. Just a nice throw by Terry Jordan to Robert Hinton. I'll tell you also the spotting of the football since he never went down is terribly important because every in from this distance is an absolute mile when you're a kicker, right? Awesome. Under this kind of pressure. Sure is. Damon Hartman from a suburb of Atlanta, Georgia. Roswell, Georgia. Number 13, the place kicker for North Carolina State. If they decide to try to kick now with six seconds to go. Don't you think they've got to? I don't think they have a choice. you got to try to try the yeah. field goal right now. The ball has been placed out at the 31. So drop it seven yards off that. It's going to be a 48-yard attempt. Now, if I'm East Carolina, they've got a couple timeouts left. Use them. Icing. Try to ice them right now. Well, what Colorado did it three straight times to Nebraska. Remember the block kick early in the game on the extra point. Robert Jones. Watch him come up inside. Try to get as much of a jump as they can inside. This would tie it. He's got the distance. It is off to the right and no good. One more look. And from that angle, you could see Mike. I, he had, had the distance, didn't he? He had the distance, just off to the right. Dick Sheridan starts the long trot across the field, and the reaction on the other side from Bill Lewis, and he realizes his football team has just won. He's got Their a top 11th ten. game of the year. He's got a top 10 football team. I tell you, they, they came back. They came back against the odds. So we'll go to break. We'll be back here in Atlanta in just a moment. The Pirates. Well, I've seen Bedlam before. I don't know what you uh, would describe this on the, on the floor of Fulton County Stadium right now. And down in the middle of all that is Adrian Karsten with the winning head coach, Bill Lewis. Rod, thanks very much. Coach, you described this as the biggest game of your life. How does it feel? Absolutely. This is the most fun I've ever had with a football team in my whole life. And this was, this was the biggest game. We talked about nobody, players, coaches, nobody had ever been in a bigger, more important football game. And then to have it unfold the way it is, I think it had special meaning to I believe. Coach, have you gone as far as you can now here at ECU? Do you take the Georgia Tech job if offered? No, I don't have any feeling for that. This program can go to the next level, and we talked about it. The fact of being able to come back and do this 
consistently year in and year out. On those last two drives, was Jeff Blake calling his own plays because of the time allowed down there? What we were able to do is we were able to get most of them called from the sideline, and uh, mo most of the calls came from the sideline. Coach, enjoy the biggest one of your life. Ryan. Well, let's take one more look at the field goal as we wish you a very happy new year and a great beginning to 1992 as this is going to be wide to the right and no good. And East Carolina, well, the miracle season is theirs. Now for Mike Gottfried, Adrian.